What's up, friend? You are you interested in lack of skill? Yeah. Or maybe some suck. I'm just a new guy for the love of game. Wait, don't go. I know it's bad. Time to change, but not my man. Don't you know the game's on my thing? Yeah, I know it's getting real late. Come on, look at me. I even do storytelling. Also, podcasts on great game subjects. Okay, yeah, I'm not a Markiplier or a PewDiePie. <laughs> but hey, that's what makes me so unique, right? 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 And hello, everybody. Welcome to The Nico Show. This is episode 54. And what are we talking about today? Well, I'll tell you, folks. We're talking about how Hollywood ruined my favorite sci-fi franchise. I had to look at the... Sorry, it's a little too dark. I had to look at the title on my stream because it's long as hell. And we got a special guest. Yes, that's right. This man right here. He's here. Well, he's here, but not really here. But he will be in a second. This is Internet Unwind. And him and I are going to be discussing... How Star- I was about to say how Star Wars. How Hollywood ruined my favorite sci-fi franchises. So, um, this will be an interesting discussion because it's the first time I ever had him on the on the show you know i don't make any money off this show well i could if it's on on twitch but not on youtube i tried doing a multi-stream on youtube and twitch but streamlabs obs doesn't have to where you can put um different stream links it just only connects to twitch i think and i'm like all right let me try this multi-stream feature and it's just facebook Oh boy, like I want to be connected to Facebook. I hate Facebook. It's way too edgy for me. It really is. I don't like it. So I'm super excited. This is great. Thanks everybody for stopping by. I forgot to put on the soundboard as well, but that is okay. Uh, so how we're going to get stay in contact with him or make contact, first contact ever, is I'm going to make give him a phone call. Before we go into that, like I said, the title is How Hollywood Ruined My Favorite Sci-Fi Franchise. So what does that mean? Well, if you're like me and a lot of people who've been paying attention to what's been going on in our favorite sci-fi genres of shows, like for example, oh, Star Wars is the biggest. Star Trek to me is second, and you got Ghostbusters, and then you got yada yada yada. I just can't think of any more on top of my head. I really, really want to talk about, you know, I could have just put, let's just talk about Star Wars, but uh, I don't know if I want to make it that exact of a of a thing to talk about because when I when we start talking to Internet Unwind, he might be giving us some different uh, franchises that he's been disappointed with lately um, that we haven't seen in a while. Oh yeah, Harry Potter's another one of those too. But I haven't been paying too much to Harry Potter. But I've been hearing, I've heard things from people who have watched them. And it sounds like those new movies are not doing so well. So we'll see how long this goes. I hope it's a very productive conversation. I think it will be. If not, then uh, I'm going to be kind of sad. Kind of sad. All right, so let's give him a good old phone call right here. I'm going to put the headphones on. All right, let's see if we can get to him. If he's, la- if he's too loud, which I don't think he will be, but if he is, I do apologize. Just let me know. Uh, yeah, I wasn't smart and we didn't do any test streams, so I'm just going from what I did with Dayton Does Gaming, the same volume, so let's see. Wait, why am I getting so, me- so many messages? Oh, that's a lot. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm going to give him a call. Hello. Hmm. Hello. Hello. Testing. Hello. <laughs> See, this is what I, I should have done. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, Internet Unwind. Welcome. Yes, we are green light. How are you, good friend? I guess Discord. Discord's still doing that thing where it takes a while to pick up my mic. Yes. Oh yeah, Discord is uh, it has a mind of its own, man. Some days. Yeah. So, how's it going? Ah, oh, just. Uh, I'm on vacation this week, but it's one of those <laughs> weird vacations where it doesn't feel like you're getting anything done. 
<laughs> are you it's at been a lazy week? Are you at home right now? Yeah. Oh, so it's like a uh, it's like a staycation, right? Yeah. Yeah, those are nice once in a while. You know, you need it. Yeah, I was hoping to get more work done. Get yeah. done after all. I mean, uh, it's all right, right? I mean, if you're on a, a vacation, uh, not doing any work is kind of the normal routine. Oh yeah, not complaining. <laughs> Um, okay, so welcome. Welcome. First time ever on the Nico channel. I appreciate you coming by. Um, how, uh, before we get started in this, I'm really, I'm actually really excited to talk about this and, um, of the topic about how Hollywood ruined my favorite sci-fi franchises. You know, honestly, mm -hmm. when I was doing my intro, I was like, maybe we should just talk about Star Wars because Star Wars is probably... <laughs> The biggest heartbreak of them all, but you know, we might add in some other uh, franchises that really uh, have fallen ill or have been destroyed. But before that, uh, how can we reach you? How can everybody in the Twitch realm or the Twitch verse uh, get in contact with you? Internet unwind everywhere. All right, so <laughs> yeah, plain and simple. Thankfully, nobody, thankfully, nobody had it anywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I was able to. In 2020. I was able to find you on Google really easily. Uh, I just typed in "Internet Online" and literally your YouTube channel was the first option. So that's pretty good. Oh yeah. So that's how you do it. All right, so we can we can reach you on Internet Online on Twitch, Twitter, um, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. I think I have an Instagram. I have a website, internetonline.com. Okay. Pretty much everywhere. Okay. So uh, I guess after the stream, I'll ask for like some of those links, even though they're probably easy to uh, easy to find since you're everywhere. I usually default to Twitter. <laughs> okay, cool. So oh, that's by far the most the most active site. Yeah, um, I, I've seen the stuff you you say on Twitter. It's very it's very interesting. But pretty much all the stuff you say on Twitter, I I all agree with. It's, uh, so it's it's nice to meet a mind who you know. Great minds think alike, you know. Always. <clears throat> I'm a little bit ego egocentric right now because uh, sometimes I don't think I have a great mind. <laughs> All right. Well, it's especially with Twitter. I like keep it keep it loose and loose and fun part. Yeah, and I think um, I think you're doing a, a great job about it. Um, do you when you do these real quick when you do these replies to these um, certain individuals that say whatever they want to say? Do they ever reply back? Um, on occasion, not very often, because usually they have, like, they have, like, a, a large following or something, or they're like, yeah, you're just a hater, and I'll either get a block, mute, or something. <laughs> but usually it's because they have nothing to say. Almost everybody that does reply back has some really, really flawed argument, and they'll continue to argue the same. I had somebody, actually, since we're going to talk about Star Wars, for one thing, <laughs> yeah. I had somebody argue with me, telling me that the entire franchise was sexist, even though the first trilogy... Yeah. Had a very, 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 very strong female role character. Um, so <laughs> I, it's <laughs> like what? Are, yeah. The, the arguments are so flawed. You know, we can just we can just dive right into it. Um, okay, <clears throat> let's 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 talk about Star Wars right now. If we talk about Star Wars the whole time, I don't care because it's still still basically on topic because <laughs> Hollywood did ruin it big time. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I just got a follow. Thank you, Jenny. Anyway. Um, okay, Star Wars Internet Online. Do you want me to call you Mister Online or Internet Online? What's what's the catch uh, here? You, you, uh, either one. You can call me Jake for all I care. <laughs> Jake, like Jake the dog from Adventure Time. That Jake. Or my name? Yeah, either uh, one. Oh, okay. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to. You know. I, I don't watch. I, I never watch. Oh, it's so good, man. It's so good. You will if if you're really. Uh, craving a cartoon to watch, like seriously, like one of the best cartoons I've ever seen, if not my favorite, besides like Dragon Ball Z, uh, Adventure Time all the way, man. It's good stuff. Okay, so uh, diving right into Star Wars. Okay, this is gonna be the first sci-fi franchise we talk about. Jake, what is Star Wars to you? How did how did Star Wars become? If you are, how did Star Wars become a? how do I say, such a big impact on your life growing up? If it was, if not, uh, I would like to hear that, that side of the story as well. What does it mean that's a to good, you? That's a really good question. Um, it might take a minute for me to think of how to put that in words, I'll be honest, because <laughs> over the years, I've become less and less attached 
to media, although I'm obviously given the content stuff I do. It very, very into watching a lot of content, absorbing all I can. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure as you've done, I've, I've had a lot of people comment, t tell me things like this. So I'm sure you've noticed it too. There's a lot of cinematic type uh, shots and stuff that I involve in my, <laughs> my stuff because I absorb so much from uh, what I've seen. Are you there? Do a lot of stuff that oh, was... Okay. Uh -huh. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, you can't uh, hear me? Discord was getting a little laggy. That's always fun. Uh, I've, I've been exposed to... When I was growing up, I was exposed to content, like, uh, say, movies and stuff, all the way back to Abbott Costello, the Marx Brothers, things like that. So I, it's really hard for me to, to say how much anything in particular to me growing up because I was just exposed to so much different type of film, so many different types of movies and all. Um, and they all played an equal part, I think, in how I how I formed my taste. But Star Wars, I, you know what? I could, I guess, I guess I could say that Star Wars was the closest thing I had to like a superhero thing growing <laughs> because yeah. uh, I mean it was comic, not comic, um, cartoons. I didn't, had, we reported didn't have comics, um, <laughs> but I could, I mean, that's probably the closest thing I had to superhero movies because I didn't, I didn't get to watch that until later. Um, I don't know why it just didn't work out. Um, but yes, yeah, so I guess, I guess that's how I phrase it. It was kind of, it was the, like, the, the closest thing I had to like a superhero movie. Yeah. It, uh, it had the, uh, the archetypes, you know, mm -hmm. it had the hero. It, I mean, the hero story is just like such a, uh, iconic thing in any type of storytelling. Yeah. So, uh, Especially the, uh, underdog elements of it as well. Yeah. And you know what? That's kind of... Star Wars for me was kind of the same way. I watched it when I was very young. Um, we had... We had the original... My family and I had the original... I, th I think we had the original Star Wars tapes, I remember, before the special edition came out. And then we all know the shit storm on that. <laughs> um, and... Uh, simple you know i just watched it like exactly like you i was exposed to a lot of different things growing up and that's why i'm not too picky with watching like sci-fi like sci-fi is probably like the number one thing that i fell in love with the most out of all the genres um because you know there was star trek there was ghostbusters or star wars you know even if i wasn't born around the time those movies came out like psh, that's why you have older brothers or that's why you have parents you know they they get you into that stuff. But, like, you said Abbott and Costello. Like, I had an Abbott and Costello movie or something like that. It was, like, black and white. I had mm -hmm. the original King Kong and all that stuff. It's 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 crazy. Watching on this tiny little TV. This tiniest TV you could possibly think of. And then one day my dad brings uh, home a bigger TV. I'm like, wow, now we can watch King Kong on a bigger TV. Anyway, so um, with, with, with Star Wars, it, it was just, like, I, I don't know what it was. It was just, like, an instant... Like, I wouldn't say romance, but it was instant, like, fan, you know? Like, I, I just enjoyed it, you know, especially, like, watching, like, the uh, A New Hope, you know? It was, it was, it was simple, a simple story, despite that it, you know, by today's standards, it may not have aged well, but it, it's still an instant classic, you know? And then when you get to, like, The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, it's just, like, wow, it's, like, you see it progressing further with, like, budget-wise and stuff like that. Um... And it, it, it's amazing how those movies came out in the late 70s and early to, to yeah, early 80s. And I I enjoyed it for what it represents and everything, you know, because like I said, it, it's like such a great, uh, as you would put, uh, you know, a beginning like superhero story, you know, mm -hmm. rise up against the, the tyrant, the, the evil villain and, you know, save the damsel of distress and have this comic relief with me or have this group of friends, you know. It's almost like it's almost like a uh, like a simple D and D campaign or something, you know. It's it had all the pieces except you know in uh, in sci fi. And um, I mean, I would just watch the movies over and over and over again. It was crazy, even when the special edition came out. And you know what? I was probably one of the few people that liked that thought the the three D job with Hut and A New Hope was fine to an extent because in the original star wars it was like this british or scottish actor it was a human who job of the hut right. was and then like yeah. all of a sudden return of the jedi he's a slug i'm like what what did i miss here <laughs> so 
it was it was good and bad that they put him as a slug in the first one, but it was just like you know the troll or the meme is it's like horrible CG or you know. <laughs> yeah, that J Jabba was one of the few things somewhat well done in the in those remasters. A lot of the rest of it was kind of. Uh, yeah, like R two mm, behind a rock. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of stuff that was really, really um, not well done. Han shot first. That that's everyone's favorite, right? Or <laughs> Greedo shot first. I don't know. The, so, um, and just just like over the years, uh, Star Wars was just always there as like my one of my go to movies, you know, or uh, trilogies to watch. And you know, eventually once the uh, once the prequel started coming out, um, you know, that was that was a big deal too because it was like, oh man, a new set of trilogies. Holy crap! Uh, pretty much as big as when. Um, like, I don't remember the hype going into The Phantom Menace because I was so young. But I'm imagining it was, the hype was pretty pretty real as, as much as it was when The Force Awakens was coming out. You know, because like, people were just like ecstatic about The Force Awakens. Like, I, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even go into a Walmart or any store without seeing some kind of Star Wars like memorabilia. And I'm like, holy crap. This is like my childhood all over again. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm reliving... I'm really in the past. Like this is going to be so great, right? That's I'm sure a lot of people were thinking of that uh, originally. And then of course we see, um, you know, we see some trailers that really made us think on a different level for Star Wars. And you're like, huh, this is interesting. But it, but it didn't, but it didn't negate the fact that how much excitement I had uh, for the the new movies or the new movie coming out. Right. Anyway. Um, is it, was that pretty much how it was for you? Uh, you stuck with Star Wars for yeah. I've never like I was saying earlier. I've kind of like hatched a little bit from how much I connect to movies over the years. But uh, like growing up, it was it, I was super attached to those movies. Um, and uh, like you, I was pretty young, so I don't really remember too much um, what happened exactly during a Phantom uh, <laughs> yeah. campaigning before it came out but i remember i remembered it being pretty insane and at the time we didn't have social media to let us know so that means that there had to have been news coverage and stuff <laughs> that i was seeing so yeah it had to have been pretty had to have been pretty uh pretty uh earth shattering at the time kind of um and then i remember uh good old jar jar kind of ruined it for <laughs> most people even at the time um and then oh, the other yeah. movies the other movies i feel like were kind of damaged by that movie yeah to be honest because i feel like the second one wasn't too bad and the third one was had really had a couple really strong points but um yeah yeah it, I don't know. at the same time as i've gotten older i remember i look back on some of the some of the stuff in the older movies and i my 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 nostalgia goggles are a little bit strong on those movies if i watch them now i see all these little issues and <laughs> oh my god yeah and then it uh <clears throat> Especially for the prequels, if you watch like the red letter media like reviews of the prequels, oh my god, it's just like flaw here, flaw there. It's but the, it's uh, so hilarious. Remember the that... A New Hope? A uh, stormtrooper bangs his head on the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, still, yeah. I I will never understand how that made it through the cut. <laughs> yeah, and then also like stormtroopers like shooting point blank and missing and stuff. Like that's probably mm -hmm. that's probably another big one. But see, I love that in the Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Making fun but, of it. You know, you know what's uh, speaking of the Mandalorian, real quick. You know, I, I, I'm probably like I'm one of those people that really liked the show, and I thought the finale was. I, I liked the finale. I really did. I thought there were some really cool uh, um, callbacks to uh, really cool Star Wars moments. Um, mm -hmm. For like spoilers, anybody. Uh, like the dark saber, I thought was really cool. Um, a callback to the Mandalorian Wars, talking about the Jedi's, and that's like a callback to like Knights of Republic, and then um, going back to the Dark Saber it talks about uh, you know the Clone Wars, and then uh, Star Wars Rebels because um, I can't I can't remember what his first name, but Fioni is the guy who worked on Clone Wars Rebels, and then he helped worked on the Mandalorian. So it was cool to see all those really neat uh, really neat callbacks to all those things. I'm like, right. huh. I'm like wow, I I know all of these. Like this is kind of a cool episode. It's like kind of being tied into to the actual Star Wars universe. You know, it's at first it was it started like a very simple like kind of gunslinger or westerner kind of thing, and then it kind of expanded as the 
as the story progressed and you kind of got a general idea of what's going on. Although, yeah. although some of the episodes were, I guess you could say like the one on Tatooine is a little bit of a filler. That's probably a lot of people's least favorite. Um, I think my favorite is the one where they go on the, uh, the spaceship, uh, to rescue one of their, uh, prison. yeah, the prison. That, that one was cool. And it just takes place in a hallway. Like, how does that episode give me more Star Wars, whatever you want to call it, magic or feels than, like, the new trilogy? Like, it boggles my mind. Anyway. Uh, one one uh, thing I will say about The Mandalorian yeah. regarding this, it, it, it kind of took the the good aspects of Star Trek uh, and mixed it with uh, Star Wars lore. Because if you think about it, that's a lot of, like, Star, Star Trek functions as, like, episode to episode, like almost like a sitcom. Yeah. Where uh, it, it doesn't necessarily play off of what happened in this episode, so um, yeah, each episode is its own little adventure. That's kind of <clears> what it did. Like Star Trek used to do it, but there was two episodes that kind of directly rolled over into the next episode. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that was one reason it actually kind of benefited is it took the it took the the pacing of a, an entirely different show, mm. um, and kind of brought it over to Star Wars, and that that's one of the reasons I think it worked so well in that. Uh, in the, like the fact that they did so much stuff in just a hallway or two or whatever, like, it, it really was. I think it was. Uh, not to mention the cameos in this show were insane. Yeah, um, there was a the, lot the of cameos. Of, yeah, the fact they got Bill Burr to play a, a, a bounty hunter in one episode, and then the <laughs> other guy was is like a really well known the the real big devil looking guy. Yeah, he's a really yeah. well known voice actor. Yeah. Um, I actually didn't realize how much of the stuff he was in until I actually was watching <laughs> something the other day where they listed like thirty different things he was in in just one cartoon I watched growing up. Wow. Um, what cartoon was it? Do you remember? I watched like four different episodes. In a row. There's a show that sci-fi, um, the, the TV channel, they mm -hmm. have a YouTube channel that uh, they have this thing, um, what you didn't know about. And it's kind of garbage because it basically is just like a history of the oh, okay. show. Um, <laughs> but it, it's actually pretty cool because they talked about, I think it was uh, Jackie. Oh, Jackie Chan Adventures. That's what. Oh, my um, God, really? and they listed a couple things he did on there. And then I looked them up and there was this huge list of stuff that he's in. And it's like, oh. I know that character. Oh, I can hear it now. <laughs> like I never, I never even occurred to me because he, he, like, whenever you see him acting in person, he's got this really deep, rough voice because he's trying to play some real big tough guy. Yeah. But then in cartoons and stuff, a lot of times he's not playing that up as much, so he sounds a little bit more normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. That's. But the the, the, the num That's amazing. Even the first episode, even the first episode of Mandalorian cameos, they definitely boosted that show. Oh, for sure. I mean. I wasn't expecting Carl Weathers to be in there. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> well, uh, they had um, uh, yeah, there was there's a apparently even uh Favreau was in this episode. We just didn't know because he's like in disguise in the background. Wow, he pulled a Peter Jackson. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars has been really big at, uh, with that because like uh, the movies too. Like uh, Kevin Smith was in uh, the Rise of Skywalker. I think it was Rise of Skywalker. Uh, he was in the scene where they're on the planet. Yeah, Babu Frick. He's on the planet with uh, Babu Frick when they're trying to sneak around right before the the uh, mm -hmm. the, the uh, rebels find him. Okay, let me let me let me tell you something, Jake. I haven't even seen the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Not oh, yet. I haven't seen it yet. I'm oh. okay. So uh, we'll, we'll get back to Mandalorian in a second. So I am waiting to watch that JJ cut that everybody's talking about. Like I want to watch the three hour the three hour cut of the movie because from what I've, every person that I've heard or videos that I watched, they were saying like, there's so much crap thrown at, at you or thrown at you. It's really hard to keep up and it's like sensory overload. So I want to wait until the cut comes out to where the pacing's probably slowed down. Um, was it like that for you? Was the pacing all over the place? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I that was my biggest issue with the movie. Um, the first half hour show feels like, rushed and some of the rest of it does feel a little bit rushed here and there yeah um there was a lot of things that people pointed out like the fact that the uh, like there was a there was a scene with finn where he starts to say something they get interrupted and he never comes back to it ever oh yeah. um but they never really give so there, there's definitely some things like that that uh that um i didn't notice until after i had you know yeah. left the theater and all that there were some other things that i just felt were kind of stupid but in general <laughs> the movie in general i enjoyed the movie it was it was not worse than the other movies in my opinion necessarily That's, the only issue yeah, yeah. i had was the fact that it felt the mm. first 10 15 minutes of the movie it really did feel like somebody fast forward on the project um it's crazy 
that was the thing. So like that's hopefully that is fixed in the um yeah. the uncut version or the director's cut or whatever. I didn't even know they were doing that. I <laughs> hadn't heard about that. Yeah. Um if that I, I'm I'm assuming that's just a, a rumor right now since they haven't released the uh the I think there's a JJ cut of the um Yep. Um the other one as well, right? The the um the last Jedi. No, and there's, there's they there, want that. There's no JJ cut of the last Jedi cuz it was um he didn't make oh, the no, movie. That's what I meant. I thought there was another cut that they wanted. I, so, I, JJ cut, I messed up. Um, it's, I don't know. It's, it's kind of complicated. Uh, so, everybody, yeah, there's like a huge hashtag movement for like JJ cut or whatever on Twitter. So, that's like the most popular one. But I heard there was like, there's like three different cuts. Okay, so one is the Bob Iger one, the theatrical cut we got. Another one is like the Kathleen Kennedy and JJ cut. I don't know if that's... If that's the three-hour one, and then there's the 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 George Lucas and J.J. Abrams cut, where believe it or not, J.J. Abrams for this movie because like he he didn't know what the fuck to do. I mean, there was no there was like for this whole trilogy had like no backbone or foundation of what they could like make original stories from. So they just like because they got rid of all the all the uh, expanded universe material source materials and stuff and just like threw it out the window. So. This was like his SOS because he was going into a shitstorm from The Last Jedi, J.J. Uh, Abrams. And then he, um, apparently he called George Lucas and asked for his help. And I guess he came on set and helped out with like make, doing some scenes and stuff. And hmm. that's the cut I want. That's, that's, that's the stuff I want because you might see some ideas that George Lucas had for his original trilogy that he had like everything written out. You might see that right. in the uh, in the JJ cut, which could be the George Lucas cut. I don't know. And then here here's the really stupid part, is that um, you might get a release of it in the theaters. Um, there's rumors about that. It's, it hasn't even been announced yet because it was supposed to supposedly come out by the end of the month, but I don't think that's happening. It might come out on Blu-ray, and then it's supposedly supposed to come out on Disney+. Plus. But every version of the cut that comes out has a different length to it. And I think that's really, really stupid. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. abysmal. Like, Disney Plus is supposed to have, like, I think the longest or something. Or maybe Blu-ray. But it's just, like, it, it's just a dumpster fire. So, yeah. um, but I'm going to wait. I'm still going to wait to, uh, to see the whatever cut. Yeah, uh, the whatever. the one thing I would warn you about is that that, mean, that could mean you're waiting until long after the initial release comes out because you know how Disney is; they like to make you wait on a lot of that stuff. Um, so that could be another full year after the movie comes out. Um, well. Also, there was um, there was a lot of stuff I was seeing actually um, confirming that there were things in the movie. I won't say what, but there was a lot of stuff in the movie that apparently confirms um, history of. Um, history of some of the uh, expanded universe stuff so apparently it wasn't all thrown out good um good. because um uh, oh uh, it was the name it was it was the knife that knife that ray has that is like a very specific uh like sith knife that's from the clone wars like tv show not even that not um, even that huh? that I, I did see that but there was um all right, well, I'll just tell you, because it doesn't really impact the story at all. It's, it's not really a spoiler. Oh, I, I've been spoiled um, so much, like, because I just don't care. I mean, <laughs> I mean you already know there's Sith Troopers and stuff. Well, apparently yeah, yeah. The, the Sith Trooper battalions, or, or um, whatever their grouping, whatever their type of grouping is, uh, apparently they're all named after um, <clears throat> past Sith Lords. Oh, and, I did see that somewhere. Um, there was some Sith Lord names that they used for those battalions, whatever, that confirmed <gasps> That's that... That's right. Um, yeah, so apparently, apparently, um, oh, what was it? Darth Revan I think is one of them. Yeah, Revan, Revan, because I, I, I hate the fact that I wasn't able to play, um, KOTOR back in the day, so I missed yeah. out on that, and then I can't stream it now, because I'd have to, like, buy an old console that <laughs> could play it, and then find a copy of it, because you yeah. can't play the, any, any of the, oh. the ripped ones or anything. Well, you work. can, um... Real quick, you can play the original KOTOR on Xbox One. It's backwards compatible. You can download it. Oh, okay. So that's pretty I'll cool. Have to, I'll have to look into that then. Because, yeah, it didn't... It, I, I've, I've tried it on Steam. Almost... Don't buy it. Do not buy any classic games on Steam. All of them are broken. None of them get fixed. It oh. is atrocious, and it's a waste of your money. 
You said uh, anyway. You said plastic games. Classic. Oh, classic. Yes, yeah. like almost every Star Wars game that's on there. Like anything, oh, yeah. anything before like the the two thousands. Like playing like oh my god, I, I tried playing Dark Forces two Jedi Jedi Knight. It, mm -hmm. it just doesn't work because it's because it, it originally runs on DOS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, even even old PC games, yeah. yeah. There's even um, even um, even like uh, the Jedi Academy games don't seem to run very well, and they, no. <laughs> they were on PC to begin with. Yeah, that was one of the launch con launch platforms, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, I but have, like I, I even had uh, I got Max Payne a few weeks because uh, Kotor did. So I was like, all right, let me just down, let me just get another classic, something else that'll work. I yeah. downloaded Max Payne. Audio doesn't work. Trolls don't work. Nothing on the oh game works. Jesus. So yeah, just don't don't buy classic. Yeah, it's they have don't. pretty bad optimization. But you know what, classic game that you will like that actually has been updated, which is great, is Kotor Two. Kotor Two is optimized for PCs and everything. It was updated like a few years ago, and it, and it runs uh, flawlessly. Um, Do you not have to play the first one to play the second. One? I thought the second one. You no, were, not necessarily, kind of because the first those games are made by different developers. Like one is made by Bioware, two is made by Obsidian. Um, they Obsidian did a fantastic job uh, talking about the events that happened in the first game, and they give you options on like they cleverly gave you options on like who uh how revan was was he male or female you know uh what kind of lightsaber did he have or was he good or bad so they give you that options without e those options without even playing the first one so it was it was like their way of doing it because there was no like mass effect one to two thing at the time you know where you can like transfer mm -hmm. your save file right so uh they did an amazing job with that one thing i do suggest doing is downloading the restored mod content that you can do with the steam workshop because uh kotor 2 was like uh, very rushed to release so there's it's missing a lot of content and the ending is just like blah so make sure you gotcha. make sure you download it it's free it's it's so worth it because it makes the game such an amazing experience um and then yeah you can play kotor one on on uh, xbox one which is nice okay so let's get back to the mandalorian yeah <laughs> I, I i you know what knowing me i knew this was going to be kind of like about uh star wars because that was like the main nitpick but it's great <laughs> but you brought in star trek so that's that, that you know we kind of we kind of tie it all in together okay so you brought in star trek into the mandalorian which i thought it was a really cool uh comparison because that's why i liked the next generation because like you said every episode is like its own standalone thing it's like it's like its own uh, movie or something, you know. It's mm -hmm. it's it's got everything you need. It's got um, you know like a mystery, conflict resolution, character building. Um, there's always like a new threat. You learn, you know. There's something new to learn, and it's like you just fall in love with the characters even more. It's just like done so well. So, um, the Mandalorian had stuff like that, like you were talking about, like the the prison ship, Tatooine. Um, I would say the when they go on the the vill the, the planet with the village is kind of like that. Um, I know he goes back mm -hmm. there to get um, uh, Kano, Corno, uh, whatever the MMA fighter chick. Uh, yeah. He comes back just to get her, but uh, in the previous episodes he helped that village out, so it's kind of like a standalone thing too, which was a pretty sweet episode. <laughs> I remember yeah, it was a good way to bring it in. I. <laughs> I've ever seen posts on Twitter like somebody getting all butthurt because the there was a female that knew how to shoot a gun, um, and it's like, ah, this is this is like empowering women. It's like so stupid, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, it's like she's a widow. Like her husband could have been in like a part of the Rebel Alliance. It could have taught her how to use a gun. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. whatever. It's like all the other women suck. <laughs> it's like all yeah, the other I, people sucked. I get why it feels like. I don't forced know. in a way but it's not like it's not ridiculous it's it's not as far out there as that do you, do you think she's a, a mary sue equivalent to ray equivalent no nah, not even close to, <laughs> equivalent to ray. ray's like hey i <laughs> um, have no train let me lift all these boulders out of the way for you for, i mean for even, the snow foxes even uh even um uh, Leia herself is not equivalent to Ray, um, <laughs> which is so so ridiculous. With Re with uh, with her, it's like built gradually. With Ray, everything just kind of felt like, yeah. whoa! I can already do everything, and I'm gonna slowly figure it out. It kind of felt 
And it's it's even more annoying knowing that they went into it doing that. It wasn't like just poor writing. <laughs> yeah, it was like, ha, 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 ha. yes, the the force is female. I'm like, oh no. Oh my word. It, uh, <laughs> I, I know. Uh, Twitter, so Twitter is in this call. <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy is interrupted. She, or, she heard <laughs> she heard us talking about her. She's a Sith Lord. Okay, so let me ask you this question. How? Let's um. Yeah, I'll, it's a pretty general question, but I think I, I think you'll do well with it. Um, how, or to you, how has Hollywood ruined Star Wars for you in in recent years, like with these new movies and stuff? I want to open um, I want to open up the biggest can of worms I could possibly do. I'm gonna try and keep it as short and sweet as. <laughs> um, oh, you don't have to. <laughs> personally, I don't subscribe to the same tie as, as uh, Twitter re. Uh, people do. Um, it it definitely feels like they've forced a lot of things, like we were just saying. <laughs> it feels like they've forced some some. Uh, I don't even care about things like 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 people. I saw people complaining about Finn being black. Okay, who cares? That that's fine. Who, I, why why does that bother you? Can I interject real quick? Uh, I would say Finn should have been the main hero. I think he would have been badass Jedi. He had a cool background. He was. He was taken as a young child, conscripted as a trooper, and then he goes rogue, and then he starts using lightsaber stuff, and he meets all these people. His his story was the most interesting, and then they just mm -hmm. fucked it all up in the second and third movie. He was just pointless. Anyway, go on. <laughs> I mean, per, per, personally, I think that it should have been kind of a three-way face. Thing. I think Finn should have had uh, a greater role in that because obviously he was force sensitive. Um, yeah. Poe. People have said for people have said for a long time that Poe, apparently in the comics or whatever Poe was actually from, apparently uh, Poe is also force sensitive, which is one of the reasons he's such a good pilot. He's yeah. supposedly better than Luke and Anakin as a pilot because wow. he's force sensitive, and they just never touch it in the movies. Well, in, so, in the in the first movie, he was supposed to die. Do you remember hearing that in the Force Awakens? He no, was I didn't to, hear that. He was supposed to die on the the when Finn and Poe crashed on Jakku. He was supposed to die. And then, huh. like, Finn, like, carries his jacket around. But supposedly, J.J. Abrams like, man, I really like Oscar Isaac. <sighs> let's not kill him. Let's, <laughs> let's keep him going. <laughs> uh, I, could, I could see that. But anyway, uh, that sounds pretty cool, though. Like, well, like, the whole Force thing. Uh, anyway, continue. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, how I w that's how I feel like I sh it should have. I feel like I just feel like it should have come down to um, either all three of them or two of them and, and Ilo. Something like uh, it, it doesn't feel like it needed to all surround um just it, and that's how it kind of ended up feeling yeah just um, mary sue oh god like yeah, said that oh uh, go ahead uh well i was gonna just get back to your your initial question uh, um <laughs> specifically how they ruined star wars was i mean force forcing her in particular i don't care about all the other stuff that complain about them being forcing and even with right i don't care that much it, it, it was yeah. forced for sure. It didn't need to be. It could have definitely been handled much different. Yeah. But personally, I really don't care that much. It, it was it in terms of the actual movies. The, the stuff that kills me more is is um, the uh, it, it's not the uh, the wokeism necessarily. It's more the um, it's yeah. more the fan base even um, the fan base <sighs> and the way they try and cram as much uh, merch and all this other stuff down your throat as possible. Star Wars kind of like you can you've oversaturated a little bit. Let's put it that way. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the fact that there are so many fans that are so overly devoted to it, and that's that goes for all of that, um, that's yeah all the movies. And that's, then the studios play off of those fans. Oh, for sure. It's um. So, they feed them crap. They, like they don't care. Just like keep feeding me Star Wars stuff. Whatever. I'm just, I'm always mm -hmm. down for crap for schlock. <laughs> well not only that like you had uh like you know like you had stuff like Raylo stand that whole thing you've seen those i'm sure uh, yeah. yeah the whole thing with finn arguing with him which was boyega was hilarious i don't, uh, so many people were taking so many things he said and trying to extrapolate them into things like racism and homophobia and stuff it was absolutely the, people, the lengths people went to were freaking hilarious um like but uh remember when star wars wasn't about toxic things and like all yeah. that stupid stuff remember it was just something simple you just go in and watch a sci-fi film and come out and be like okay that was pretty cool or i didn't like it and that was yeah. it like where 
Ah! <laughs> so, like, I know for the most part we're kind of talking about Star Wars in general, but um, it's all good. And if we're talking about Hollywood in general, essentially what it comes down to for me is ah, crap! I lost the word I was going to use. Anyway, Hollywood has this tendency now to feel like they need to put a meaning behind everything. It can't just be entertainment for entertainment's yeah. sake. It's it's got to be some kind of political campaign behind it, you know, some yeah. kind of movement. And it's just like, why, why? It just mm -hmm. automatically poisons the well. Like let let the movie speak for itself, right? Let the movie do the work. Like don't put all this, oh my god, all this subtext and background noise and all this crap it's like you can't even it sucks we you know we kind of do this to ourselves because it's like we see we can't help but see it on social media from like people we follow or or it's just like like you said it's like so advertised everywhere you can't escape it you just absolutely can't escape all the yeah. all the haters all the crybabies the you know the fanboys <laughs> like i can't remember i don't know if you uh follow pewdiepie at all but a couple of years ago, he actually, uh, he was making fun of somebody um, yeah. who complained about him. Like, <laughs> you don't even have a message. Like, what are you doing? If you don't have a message, what are you doing? Yeah, it's and just it trying to troll. And it, yeah, well, that's the thing, though, is like, she kind of had, I don't know if she was trying to control, control him or not. Um, but she was for sure uh, getting people... Um, to actually think that way there was definitely a lot of people that actually thought that way saw people before that was before i think that was all before the uh the the racism and stuff like that allegations all came out oh, um man. poor guy but the um but yeah that that's essentially my biggest issue i'd say is is the fact that hollywood has gone that far now i mean because like you have com you have comedians all the time who say who like um i just i just saw there was an article recently actually i read and uh, hated it the every second of it um, because Chris D'Elia, have you ever seen his stand-up? No, no, no. Chris D'Elia isn't a super offensive at all. Uh, he's not a Ricky Gervais. He's not a, a Bill Burr. Yeah. But he does make jokes that could be offensive because almost anything can be offensive. Yeah. Um, but he has made, like, he made a joke on a podcast about uh, how he has, he apparently, he never says it. He The joke was he was getting everybody else to react to, to the fact that he was this he was describing a Starbucks that happens to exist and the joke was that uh he was constantly describing more and more things that would lead it to to be obviously a racist Starbucks <laughs> um yeah that would obviously be offensive to some people and the, the joke was they would react to it like you're describing a racist Starbucks what yeah. are you doing you need to shut that Starbucks down. anyway um yeah. so the the article came out um, and it was constantly taught. It was talking about how he doesn't make it. He doesn't have offensive jokes. He doesn't have offensive humor. So he didn't need to go into this, to this, uh, part of his set on stage when he was get this article was, was reviewing this set. Um, and it was essentially, they were just complaining because he made jokes about how, uh, people are too outraged about things and they can't just take a joke. Um, and their point was that, uh, he doesn't have offensive humor, so he didn't need to make this statement anyway. Yeah, but he does make jokes that people are offended by. So he kind of it was it made sense. Not to mention it's a joke about his. It was a set about his profession. So it was perfectly fine. So like the the idea that like you have to have a message, but not only do you have to have a message, it has to be in line with whatever guideline. Um, you know they decide in Hollywood are are the the messages you have to take. For some reason, comedians are more understanding of. The idea of entertainment over messaging when it comes to entertainment than hollywood itself <laughs> that's yeah that's interesting that's because the difference between hollywood and comedians is comedians well the ones that don't get um pressured from all that you know racism and all that stuff you know where they kind of just you know they're themselves they have this this uh what is it called? This whole uh, setup to where they know what they're going to say, what jokes to make and stuff. Like, that's fine. But as soon as they kind of get like, uh, like I said, when they get that pressure, where they get that uh, that PC stuff involved, and if they change the way their outlook is on comedy, then yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to watch those people. But the the point I'm trying to make is that Hollywood tries to cater to everybody, like especially like in the Star Wars movies, they they try to cater to almost every uh 
click population, whatever demographic you could think of, like the Raylo people, the the Mary Sue Rays, you know, like the the, the forces female people, the uh, um, what's I don't know. They try to cater to like the uh, the old school Star Wars fans, but that didn't work out so well. But right. you know they they they, uh, they go to the normies like to, of like today's standards for like Star Wars fans, and it's like out the window. But anyway, um, so that's kind of how Hollywood is. Comedians, the the good ones, they just like I said, they just go in and do their thing, and it it and that's how it is. They don't really care. Uh, if it offends people, if it gets people riled up, like Ricky, Ricky Gervais, for example, like in the Oscar mm-hmm. speech and stuff, that's great. And he's, especially in his stand-up that he did last year, his like comeback stand-up, it was hilarious. Um, and he just doesn't, he just doesn't give a shit. He just speaks his mind and everything, and it's great. It's like if you like him, you like him. If you don't, you don't. He comedians shouldn't have to try to cater to everybody. It's just like almost impossible, and then you're just like all over the place. That's kind of how. That's just kind of how these sci-fi franchises are. Like, like, um, like I said, with Star Wars, with Star Trek Discovery. Oh my God! Don't even get me fucking started on Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> what a giant shitstorm! Um, I hate, I hate Alex Kurtzman. You know what? I'm gonna hate Picard. I know I'm gonna hate Picard because he worked on it. Ah, and he, he's he's the same way. He's like Hollywood uh, doll, you know, or the typical Hollywood producer, or director, or whatever. You know, he's trying to cater to all these new generations of kids. The, the, uh, you know what kind of people I'm talking about? The ones that get easily offensive. It's like, why is this yeah. hat? Why is this male talking to this female this way? Why aren't there any gay people? Blah, blah, Young blah. Young activist generation. Yeah. So, um, that, that Star Trek is, 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 is not any safer, which is really sad because Star Trek Discovery did only two seasons. I don't know if they're doing a third season. I pray to the guys they don't. And from seeing some stuff, on Picard, I'm really, really heartbroken because I, you know, Star Wars and Star Trek The Next Generation were like my sci-fi shows growing up or movies. Those were the things that help, um, uh, how do I say, like they put the most impact on my life in, in terms of like, you know, storytelling, character building, falling in love with these archetypes and just, just realistic characters, you know, even though, even set in a sci-fi realm, you know, they still had that some kind of realism to it that you can connect to. So, but we don't, we're not seeing that in Star Wars or Star Trek. And, um, God, Picard, if, if it does do bad, man, what, what a disappointment because that's like, it's, it's a big thing coming. And let's not get it on, let's not get started on like Ghostbusters 2016. Like, why? <laughs> it's, you know, that's another example. Like, okay, okay, all, all female cast, whatever. But it sucked. It was just absolutely terrible. I've never seen the movie. I never will. But from what I've seen from my Red Letter Media and all these other news outlets that are like on Twitter, disaster. Like absolute disaster. It's just like it retained nothing from the original movies. And I don't know if that movie was just trying to like prove something like, you know, with the political background or something. It's like, oh, look at this all female cast. And then, um, oh, just a giant shitstorm. And then there's another Ghostbusters movie coming out that actually is a sequel to like the original films and it actually looks pretty decent have you seen the trailer for it i did i know a lot of people that really really hate the way it looks i don't think it looks that bad well Um, yeah because it's trying to go for like this gritty feel almost like a zach schneider type grittiness yeah well there's one criticism i I did kind of agree with um and that's the fact that it's it's a sequel but it doesn't look like it's going to really have much of the original ghostbusters which would have which kind of is what people want from it <laughs> yeah. uh they want more of uh who I mean, let's be let's be honest here who doesn't want more bill murray um <laughs> old but, ass bill murray <laughs> <laughs> um no but like that's that's what people really want is they want more of the ghostbusters not more of some ghostbusters whoever they are yeah. um and i the one criticism i do really get from that i that i saw uh the only one i really agree with was uh that it feels like they're going feels like they're trying to take feel of strange things and put it in every single movie that they can get the kid from stranger things into oh yeah so he's doing a lot of stuff these days too it's crazy yeah and i I get what they're saying i kind of agree it doesn't need to be like stranger things i get that i get that part of the vibe is because it's an eight it's a sequel to an 80s movie yeah but 
they they kind of feel like they're prioritizing the idea of like if these kids trying to uh fight a supernatural event yeah while the adults don't believe them that it's happened <laughs> yeah i i completely i completely see where the uh where the parallels are being get why yeah um, it, it kind of has the same foundation but it's like I don't know. I mean, how many different stories can you make, right? Isn't it like seven? <laughs> There's like seven, well, sto- seven stories. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, but the, I, I get why the issue is like there's so many parallels. There's, yeah, there's more yeah. than a couple, and, <laughs> well, it's, and it's because there's like one a year because he's doing more than one movie. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they kind of, I, I guess, I guess it's kind of the funny thing is it's not that they've typecast him as much. I don't as much as they've typecast the movies he's gonna be in. Um, yeah. because it's not like these movies are all, it's almost like they're, they're seeing him. They're like, Oh, this would be this move, this show. If we take him and put him in this setting and this idea, we put some other kids around them. Boom. Stranger things, uh, separate universe. Like, it. yeah, I'm surprised he wasn't in the it movie. Like the first he one. He was. Wait, he was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I remember, if I remember correctly, he was in, he was one of the kids in it. Oh my in gosh. The, uh, the new it. That's what I'm saying. Like that movie had had a lot of those same. Um, those oh same, my uh, god! It's, function. It's so true. You want to know something? Here, here's an outlier for him, which uh, I don't think many people will talk about. He is actually in a horror show. Uh, well, okay, I, I guess Stranger Things is is a horror show. Like I get that, but I think it's on. I think it's on Hulu. It might be on Hulu. But he is like some weird, decrepit, like disturbed kid, set in like this mansion, uh, in this mansion, and like this this lady. It's it's one of those things where the lady comes to the mansion and stays there, and it's like not all uh, everything's not as it seems, you know. It's, there's like a dark past and stuff. But the kids are like, f- like really like fucked up, and and um, the kid from Stranger Things is one of the messed up kids. So it's, it's so it's kind of cool to see him as like the the not the hero you know kind of like the the sick twisted individual so i'm like okay well they could get him to do finally something else besides playing like the hero you know what i'm saying yeah. um but that's the outlier <laughs> that's i'm pretty sure that's the outlier because like you said he's an it as as one of the good guys stranger things good guys ghostbusters good guys mm-hmm. um, and all of them have a all of them are, are have kind of like a tie to the 80s yeah Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's another. Th- yeah, <laughs> there's even Ghostbusters it, in Stranger Things. He yeah. dresses up as one. It's like, OMG. Hey, yep. he's he's in a Ghostbusters. Let's put him in. Let's put him in yeah. this uh, cosplay. He looked really good. Let's put him in this Ghostbusters movie. And uh, actually, oh, jeez. What happened? Um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Did I lose you for a second? No, no, it's something, something else entirely. No, okay. exactly doing anyway um <laughs> no but uh did, i kind of feel bad for the kid because it, he's kind of getting stuck in the same type of roles all the time and yeah kind of worried he's, gonna, he's he seems like he's a decent actor real say I, yeah a lot, you of people, should, um, a lot of people are sick of him but, <laughs> i i think he's fine like i don't have a problem with him yeah yet. you should yeah, um, actors are always hit him yeah exactly like he uh like in terminator 2 <laughs> 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 one hit wonder right oh jeez. Yeah, right? Um, well, he takes a lot of hits now, if, if I'm correctly. Hell yes, my boy. <laughs> I guess he never really got over uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger melting away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like post-traumatic Wait, stress the, offset. Was it the second one? For some reason, I was thinking it was the first one he melted. No, the first one, he got crushed. Oh, yeah, you know, I remember right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I got um, you. That's fine. And, you know, it's, it's all good. It's a great movie nonetheless. Who cares? So, um... Yeah, original Ghostbusters was, you want to, like, I grew up with watching Ghostbusters, but I never actually watched the whole movie. Like, I'd always see it on TV, and I'd always see someone else watching it, so I'd watch it for a little bit. But um, I watched, I I saw enough scenes to get an idea of what Ghostbusters represented. It It was a kind of charming, fun film, you know? Yeah. Just like the old Superman movies, right? Like they were like the uh, the first two, not 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 three or four, no way. Um, <laughs> but they were, you know, it was like, hey, I'm Superman, I'm gonna go save the day, da, 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 da. you know, stuff like that. And then and then nowadays Superman is like, I'm really just, you know, gritty and dark, dark tone, and 
Thanks, yeah. Zack Schneider. I'm, I'm I'm not Batman. Do you know this? <laughs> yeah, like, I, what the I hell? Started on Star Wars. Or it's not Star Wars. Don't get me started on Superman. But no, no, um, but this is this is the time to get started because Hollywood once again is ruining oh no, it's not, ruining it's, superhero it's even, stuff. It's not even necessary. No, but eh. hmm. <laughs> see, I've never liked Super. Oh, I, I never liked him either. I, I just Superman like is, I just like Henry Cavill. <laughs> Superman is is based like they have to create reasons for him to not be good at everything. That I, I I never liked Superman because of that. Kind of but don't um, remember, don't you remember? He broke the guy. He broke General Zod's neck. Oh, <laughs> shots fired there. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, one issue I did have, one issue I now have with Ghostbusters I didn't have growing up is now I know who Dan Aykroyd is. <laughs> so, um, are you aware of the lore behind Dan Aykroyd? Yeah, and his liquor. Yeah, I've seen all the... his. <laughs> his uh, you've seen the John Tron video. Oh yeah, yeah, but I, but I knew okay. he had liquor stuff before that and all that jazz. But yeah, John Tron like solidified his absolutely. It's just like, uh, like Gwyneth Paltrow with the goop. Yeah. Oh. Well, I knew good. about goop. I didn't know about. I didn't know about Ackroyd. I bought Ackroyd's liquor. I don't. Know. With, without knowing it was it his, like or you did years ago. Yeah, I just bought it because it had the crystal skull, and I was like, I was new to drinking. I was like, I, I didn't start drinking until I was twenty-one. I, I wasn't a partier because I was homeschooled at it. Anyway, point is, cool. I didn't start drinking until I was 21. Yeah. And so when I went when I was 21, I was like, what looks... First thing I bought was Smirnoff. Regular <laughs> Smirnoff bottle of vodka. Hated every second of it. Yeah, terrible. Um, and Absolutely then I was terrible. like, you know what? What what looks interesting? And I saw the, the Crystal Skull bo box. <laughs> and I saw the one that had the, the, the shot glasses. <laughs> okay. Even if I hate the stuff, I get the Skull shot glasses too. Okay, I'm buying that. So I got it. Yeah. And now I have an empty bottle that I poured half of in the toilet or in the sink because I really couldn't stand the taste. Of it. I've been saying for I've been saying to everybody it tasted like it tasted like charcoal. I don't oh know. god! Isn't it like like high uh, proof, like 130 proof or 80 proof um, or something? 80 proof. Well, I drink Captain Morgan Black, uh, which is like 90 proof. So Oof. the proof isn't necessarily the problem. It's just the taste. Um, I actually looked at the bottle recently, trying to find anything on it about <laughs> what it was in it, and I can't. There's like nothing on the bottle that I can find. Oh wait, you, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, oh you have fine print there. Oh, you have it right there. Nice. Uh, oh yeah, it's sitting in the background of all my videos. Um, <laughs> watching. Forty percent alcohol by volume. Okay. Wow. That's so. That's quite, not terrible. That's not. Yeah, that's not terrible, but it's quite a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, if 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 the if the liquor tastes like crap, it tastes like crap, which is pretty much almost all alcohol to me. Yeah, I've wow. heard some people say it was really. I just. So I, I might even like it more now that I'm now that I'm almost eight years older or something. <laughs> yeah. So you weren't, you weren't uh, like uh, how do I say like triggered when you saw a crystal skull and it reminded you of the Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> well, no, because I got the bottle before the movie came out. I think. Oh re say? well, the movie came out in like 2008. I th uh, I think or 2007. That long ago? Yeah, yeah it's maybe, maybe I'm wrong. It came around the time of Transformers was coming out because Shia LaBeouf was like you know the guy <laughs> at the time oh shia labeouf do it <laughs> what a guy yeah you're right 2008 yeah uh i don't know when i saw the movie because i didn't i didn't think that one looked that good so i might not have seen that until long after i uh, got uh, i might have actually gotten the bottle before i saw them oh okay 20 2008 um, it, what's funny is that I just made that that comparison like it just came to my head when I saw the John Tron video I wasn't even thinking of like uh, Crystal Skull from Indiana Jones until we started talking about it yeah uh, yeah when I saw I always wondered where like I, I wondered when I got the bottle from I was like what the guy I mean it looks like it's really cool so maybe they just thought it was really cool um, and then uh, when the John Tron video came out and other stuff came out okay so it yeah, yeah. that's why Okay, so that's it's the same lore behind the Indiana Jones movie too. Okay, I didn't realize that was based on a real actual lore, and it's like okay, whatever. Yeah, he's uh, Dan right. Aykroyd's a interesting individual. I mean, to be fair, I guess in some level, there's I've heard people say before you got to be a little bit crazy to, to be a good comedian. Oh, um, of course. Look at Kramer because you got to have you got to have an interesting outlook on at least. You yeah. got to have a, a weird outlook and interesting person to begin to be able to really well, yeah, succeed yeah, in comedy. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so that that's... Uh, <sighs> so it's her, it damaged my opinion of him a little bit. A little bit. Uh, just because he's so out there now, it's not... 
<laughs> well, he's it's probably ridiculous. He, he's even probably more popular thanks to John Trump. He's been immortalized. Well, he's also been on Joe Rogan's podcast since then, and a bunch of other things. Oh it's, my gosh, he's been on Joe Rogan. Yeah. Of course. Oh yeah, you should watch that. It's it's a laugh because the uh, <laughs> uh, he's been on TV shows stuff. It's 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 very entertaining. He was on a local radio station here. So um, um l- let me ask you this. Do you think that they will bring back the original Ghostbusters and the new one coming out? Or do you think Hollywood... Uh, I what, do you th- are what, what do you think Hollywood would do? It, what do you mean? If they put them in the movie? or if like, they, Do you think uh, Hollywood would, would try to get that quick cash grab by putting these uh, famous celebrities from like the old movies in there? Or do you think it would just be like its own like standalone thing with just the kid? No, they. Um, my understanding is they are in the movie, but they're just doing cameo type roles. They're, they're smaller roles. They didn't show them in the trailer, which is good. I think it's. I think that was intentional because yes. they didn't want to give the the wrong idea that they are going to be a main part of the cast. Yes, um, that was a very smart. And and from what Red Letter Media said, they didn't play the theme song, which is very good too. Yeah. Um. Um. The the under what I'm understanding right now is basically, and I I, I don't remember where I heard. This, so I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I remember hearing that the that the understanding right now is um, the kids um, either find tapes or something, and yeah. that's where you see yeah. um, Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and all that is from them looking at historical documents or something, yeah. uh, or potentially even them actually contact someone to uh, talk to them. Yeah, and um, then and it, then you see the car and everything, which is cool, and then like yeah. they're, they're like jumpsuits and stuff. Uh, it would be funny if Bill Murray was basically the new Slimer. Because <laughs> like, he's just he's so a, like, old he actually and sweaty. died in the lore. No, no, oh. he actually died. Like, if he died in the lore and now he's actually a ghost and that's how they talk to him or something. Uh, well, <laughs> like he's it, just Slimer. That's, that would be pretty interesting. But, you know, they would probably pick um, the kid's dad who, who died. Um, yeah. Because, like, the actor died in real life or whatever. Well, uh, I just meant, like, that, that'd be interesting. That's how they work it. Like they just, died a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. And just make them that's, all slimes. That's how they're learning about ghost hunting from the ghost hunters as ghosts. <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, yeah, they don't need to work out. They just be in these giant slime suits. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know, don't CGI it. Just just put them in <laughs> put them in like Jabba the Hutt like slug costumes where it takes like four people to <laughs> operate. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, I don't know. Like the uh, will Hollywood. Will Hollywood do a decent job with this Ghostbusters movie? We have to see the next trailer. That's, uh... Because this is like a teaser, so that'll be a... The next one is usually the one where we get more stuff happening and, like, the point of the movie yeah. is, is... Is, uh... They get the point across. And I hope they don't pull a Batman v Superman where they show way too much in the trailer. Oh, my lord. That's almost everything. I mean, I thought they showed. Too, I mean, I'll be honest. I thought they showed too much in the uh, Disney trailers for the new Star Wars movie. But um, yeah, that, but oh when God, I actually, yeah. they showed way too much. But then when you watch the movie, it's like okay, so they showed way too much, but it was different context. And it's like ah, uh, that's that's how they do it. Doesn't make me feel any better because I still felt like I saw all the major points, and it was just <laughs> different than they made it look in the trailer, which didn't doesn't necessarily mean that i didn't see the part it just yeah. changes how it affects the movie yeah yeah um what if what if each like tv spot was just like because like uh they're like 30 seconds and everything but what if it was like um like reminds you of the pacing of like the actual movie so they're all like because the tv spots were like quick jump cuts and then like the movie's quick jump cuts so yeah it's like uh i i guess I guess the Rise of Skywalker is just a bunch of little TV spots put into one. <laughs> one thing I thought was really funny about the uh, the Rise of Skywalker that I can see, and you'll probably I'm I'm gonna say this too because if you remember it when you're watching it, you'll probably get a little out of it. Yeah. But when you're watching the opening crawl, um, oh, God, I heard it was there's terrible. never there's never well yeah, it's very short. It was really weird. Um, oh, wow. And I didn't realize that till after I watched a couple of the other movies after I came home. From, I watched a couple <laughs> of the other ones. Um, yeah. and I was like, yeah, that was really a weird crawl. Um, but I noticed in the theater that they capitalized full words. So it felt like when I was re- when I was reading the crawl, I, w- I kept reading it as, as all caps. So I kept reading it as like, 
the rebellion is going to Tatooine. <laughs> like it, it read like they were just like randomly yelling words in the well, like it was like someone bizarre. had Tourette's. Yeah, someone wrote out something Tourette's like that. Yeah, like... I don't know. It was freaking. It was. It made me laugh out loud in the theater, <laughs> and my wife staring. At me, but um, even worse because it was opening weekend. <laughs> so wow. I'm sure I had more than just my wife looking at me. Um, but yeah, like there was there was a lot of weird little things. There's something else. There, another thing I noticed is Star Wars is editing. Um, aside from the like cinematics and CGI and all, it's very basic. Cause like they have like just a basic white. Yeah. For the transitions, it's just uh, it's just something I noticed. It, it's, but um. They used to have um in in the original trilogy they used to have some pretty cool transitions. Um, yeah, they would do a lot of cool things like a spaceship is flying by and they would use the white where the spaceship is and things yes. like that. So it, at least it would be unique that way. You know, but uh, in in, uh, the mo- in these movies they yeah. feel like they've gotten kind of lazy about. Them. Oh, I mean, that, that's you preach it to the choir. They just got lazy with the whole fucking trilogy. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, I was talking about the uh, the transition stuff. Uh, Respawn um, with with Fallen Order. They were trying to do that as well. Try to get that clever uh, wipe and everything. And one of the developers was talking about how difficult it was to do some of those transition scenes. Like it was like mm. it was like it's a pain in the ass. So I wonder if it was a pain in the ass for them back in the day. I I don't know. Maybe it was. Oh, for sure, back then it would. But it's like because um, think think about think about what your difficulty is today. Your difficulty yeah. is basically just figuring out what you want to use to make that transition slide feel natural. Yeah. Um, a spaceship flying across the screen, an animal running across the screen. You know. Well, yeah, um, it, it's got to fit the context the and, the, and what's going on. Yeah, for sure. Right. And that's the thing is like now it's all about just making sure you plan those shots. It has nothing to do with like you don't even have to necessarily pay, um, plan those shots. There's very many. There's a lot of different ways you could. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you could uh, use B-roll very easily. Yeah. I mean, even if you just pan down to the ground or something, and then you, <laughs> yeah. you know, when you pan down to the ground, it, at least that that feels more natural than just like, well, the camera's looking at Ray's face, and then we're gonna wipe across it with a, a space scene yeah um it just there's so many different ways you could do it naturally now yeah. very easily just by digitally sliding the screen yes um yes. i mean i don't i don't even like using wipes and stuff like that because it's such a basic editing technique so personally i don't use it in my videos I, yeah if I, can, yeah, exactly. if I can do more advanced transition stuff every single video yeah why can't you <laughs> disney <Yeah>. um <laughs> Uh, I know. Shut up. Watch the movie. You got a money movie. <laughs> just, just whatever. Just keep watching. Oh look, everyone's dead. Oh look. On five or twenty bucks. <laughs> um. Uh, no, but um. The uh yeah, but the, I'm imagining like trying to do that back then when you would have had to actually physically cut the film, <laughs> um, and try and like pace it out that. way. But you would also yes. had to figure out how to overlay it with the models, which you would have had to like design, like set up the models in your little black box or whatever where yeah. you had the model sitting. Like it would have been so much more difficult yeah. to do it back then than it is now, which makes it hilarious to me that they haven't gotten better at it. They've gotten worse at it by now. See, and you know what? If they put those transitions in even the new movies, it would it would be fine because the movies are known to do that. Like that was like right. the, that was like the cool thing back in the day. So it would have that kind of nostalgic feel or just kind of like continuity sake. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's iconic of that of that uh, series. It, I, it, I, it, I think the prequels had it too, didn't they? Uh, yeah, all of all of the Star Wars, even Mandalorian, I think does it. Like they've all they've all done it. Um, wow then, it's just sometimes it's less yeah. natural it's like i remember i think i remember a speeder um yeah. being used in one of the prequels i think it was the um that's crazy it's crazy to say it but i feel like i feel like um phantom menace did a better job with those transitions <laughs> than yeah. any of the newer trilogy um i i think the prequels are better than a newer trilogy so there we go i they they have their ups oh for sure but yeah, I don't think either. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't think either one is better than the other necessarily. Um, oh man, the, the, Com- the positives videos. and negatives go are, are, are pretty, pretty varied there. Astronomical. I, I think it would be great to see like 
people i'm sure people are rate donuts like what's worse the prequels or the new trilogy oh my god it'd be so great oh there's definitely people comparing them yeah um so oh god and then in hollywood they're gonna be making more star wars movies and Mm -hmm. so you know if, if, if the new ones do bad and they'll blame it on us again you know like ryan johnson did with the last jedi and all that i'm like okay bro whatever you say I, here's the thing i think if they stop trying to tie themselves to the currently existing uh saga um by the way they, they refer to it as like the skywalker saga it's palpatine saga palpatine is the one doing everything from the beginning of it um, yeah yeah he's in um every almost i mean yeah, by this point, like in the Rise of Skywalker, yeah, Palpatine for sure. But yeah, the, if if he wasn't in the Rise of Skywalker, then it'd be like okay, maybe it is an actual Skywalker thing. Um, well, right, yeah. If he if he, if he, if it had nothing to do with him in the yeah, sure. But that's what I'm saying is like in reality, it's not the Skywalker saga, Palpatine saga, because from Episode One, Palpatine is there, it, yeah. even if he's not physically shown on screen. No, actually, he is shown on screen, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's he in actually it quite physically, he, yeah, he's actually physically shown. Um, so yeah, I, I personally, I, I Palpatine saga, Tower. Um, which, because I mean, think about it, he's the only character to make it through the entire saga. Yeah, that's true. Like he's... even even Obi Wan, Obi Wan makes it to Episode Four. four. A new hope. Um, Luke is only in Episodes Four through Four through Nine. Um, um you could well thinking you could say well you could say you, you could, could say, say he's in episode three you could say anakin because i mean if you consider anakin as darth vader you know because well they're... anakin only made it to episode six yeah so you what, what about his what about his helmet on. his helmet in episode seven <laughs> <laughs> he's still alive uh you got some point there i'll give you some <laughs> but but, but um, in the last jedi poof gone <laughs> his helmet's missing um, which by the way all this, all the subplots that they had a lot of cool things that they were trying to build up on the Force Awakens. Like, how the hell did he get his helmet? What's his helmet even doing there? I mean, I understand it's like almost like treated like a Sith holocron, but it's like still it doesn't explain. Uh, where did the lightsaber of Luke Skywalker? How did that come back? Ah, it's a story for another time. It's a story for another time. All right, well, here, here's um, Darth Vader when he died is on the new death star or whatever it was in the in the in that movie yeah after he kills the emperor the emperor survived though yeah at, at, at some level he survived whether he was a clone or not we don't really know um <laughs> yeah but he survived so he could be the reason that that mask um still there yeah that's my thing i think yeah. they they're that's definitely potentially connected I, 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 there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that people have thought of. I saw somebody complain about, like, how did he even survive the fall? How did Luke survive a similar fall? It's not. Yeah, this for two seconds. This it's is the emperor big. we're talking about. Ugh. Um, um in, in, in the, uh, in the EU or the comic books, uh, Palpatine, he, he comes back in the comic books in the movies. So him coming back is not like a, a new thing in Star Wars lore. Um, in the comic books, he tries to, uh, his, supposedly, the body of Palpatine we see in the movies isn't really, from what I hear, is not Palpatine himself. It's just, like, uh, Palpatine just took over that body, and then, like, that body was just like, okay, fail. And then he, because he tr he's so powerful that he has to find worthy hosts to take over to handle his, his, his force energy. So in the comic books and stuff, he finds somebody to do that he takes him over um and this was like six year is it six it might be four years six years it's you know not too long after return of the jedi but he goes around and tries to look for new hosts and uh takes them over and um yeah he's had a second coming um would have been kind of cool if they went with that storyline but you know we just have him lying dormant somewhere <laughs> Which, one thing I one one thing I thought was kind of weird about these movies is they never really made it clear that Palpatine. I, I don't know if it's because it was kind of retconned later or what, but apparently it was Palpatine who made up the uh, the two Sith rule. So it's kind of weird that um, they've kind of not 
like touched on that much. Oh, it um, was besides in the like Clone Wars cartoon. I, I haven't watched hardly any of that because I didn't like it when it was coming. In. But then yeah. when I found out Darth Maul returned and Darth Maul is my favorite uh, Sith. Yeah. Um, I was like, okay, I gotta at least give it a shot. And then they kind of talked about that a little bit at one point in there that like yeah. he was like that that was kind of like where that kind of got uh changed was uh when he killed uh when um palpatine killed uh, uh whoever the uh the his um was it plagueis plagueis yeah plagueis yeah, his master. yeah yep um well so the rule of two let me just add a little um star wars nerd logic um the rule of two was invented way back during like the old republic days right. by darth bane he he made the rule of two um, okay, I must have read. I must have read some inaccurate information then. Well, see, here's the thing. That was old canon. <laughs> uh, New canon might be different. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what canon it was based on, or, or what the. Uh, what uh, ruling do it was we based even on. know any canon these days? Because remember, we we're talking about how Darth Revan actually exists. These Sith Lords exist. Uh, this knife that Ray's uh, holding yeah, it is from Clone Wars, which was before before the expanded universe was wiped out, or whatever old canon stuff. It's like ah. It's like they yeah. don't even know. Um, so let's. I don't let, know if it's true. Did you see the Did you see the image going around of uh, of? Uh, oh, never mind. I, I don't want to say it. Never mind. Because I, I just realized it's spoiler. It's a spoiler, but it was going around for a while. So I don't know if you saw it or not. But I don't want I don't want to bring it up because it's kind of a spoiler. All right. When I, when I watch the movie, you can you can tell me, and I'd be like, all right. What was the spoiler? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So uh, let's go back to let's go back to Star Trek, Jake. What? Have you been a? Are you a Star Trek fan yourself? Are you a Trekkie like me? I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm not die hard, so I guess I can't call myself a Trekkie. But I love the next generation Star I Trek. I liked the new movies. Okay. JJ uh, Abrams made up, those. <laughs> I grew up. I know. Um, they were okay. In my, not great, but okay. Yeah. Um, I also well, I also like Cumberbatch. Um, yes, he's amazing. I like a lot of stuff he's into, so I liked I liked that movie more than I probably should have, just because I like his. Uh, oh, he's, um, he's but so I, good. I grew up with uh, the Next Generation. My dad, my dad watched it all the time, and it's not that we're ne- we've we've ever been like necessarily that invested in any of it. Um, it's just my dad happens to be one of those guys where like he doesn't have much that he really cares about doing. So, um, for a long period of time, he actually wanted to watch entertainment stuff. Now he's all about just watching new stuff all the time. Um, so he just kind of like he, whenever he gets whenever he's not doing something, if nobody's else watching something, he just turns on whatever that is. So like when I was homeschooled, um, he would be watching like reruns of stuff during the day because he worked nights. So we would sit there if I had if I was done my homework or if I hadn't started yet or whatever, watch reruns on like TBS or wherever was showing. I think it was like Blake or something would show reruns constantly. Oh no, TNT. I don't, uh, I don't know why it matters. Uh, Star Trek. Yeah, they would It'd run. Be, it'd they probably would run. be CBS. So, I, well, no, no, no. It was, it was definitely um, basic cable. Okay. Channel. Because uh, they would have had like during the mornings they would have had uh, talk shows and things like that. It would have. It was during that period of time. Um, but yeah, so I watched. I watched all. Uh, probably just about all of uh, the next three. Wow. Point. Um, and I know I saw probably most of Deep Space Nine as well because at one point they switched over to Deep Space. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Next Generation was always my favorite. I don't remember much of it because of when it happened. I but and I don't have enough interest to go back and rewatch it. Oh, it's so um, good, so good. Because there's so much stuff to get through watching it, and I remember I, I I feel like watching. I feel like how much I know about it now, I would probably be bored trying to go back and watch a lot of it. Yeah, I would enjoy a lot of it, but I would hate a lot of it too because it'd be so. Um, especially when you have things like the Orville, which to me is like the closest thing we have to uh, next generation um, <laughs> yeah. type execution of a yeah. show. Yeah, um, I heard, is Orville still going? It is, um, but apparently it's moving to Hulu, and there's a lot of rumors going around that it's not even going to make it to season four um, uh-huh. because apparently there's like some issues with the cast or something, so they're worried that they might not be able to do another one. But um, if you haven't watched it and you have Hulu, definitely watch i didn't know I, I it was on it. hulu is it or yeah uh let me let me make sure it's still on there but um, i have hulu. It's, it's actually owned um did you see the thing did you see all that going around about um i think it's um did you see um the stuff going around about seth mcfarland's uh contract uh with nbc 
I saw one thing on it, but I don't even remember what it was about. But basically, he's making two hundred two hundred million dollars, or some kind of uh, some kind of I don't want to say exclusivity deal, but basic basically he's signing a deal with NBC, I think, to to work with a bunch of their subsidiaries, Peacock and all that, wow. to create original content for a bunch of them. And uh, Hulu is moving from Fox over to uh, Hulu. Orville's moving from Fox to uh, Hulu. Okay. Um, okay, that makes sense. But Family Guy apparently is still staying on Fox for some reason that they're still making that and putting it there, while the rest of his stuff moves off, off their uh, sites. I, 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 it's why. because it's, it's a little bit confusing. It's because Family Guy makes so much money still, probably. Yeah, it's weird though that Disney would want to hold on to Family Guy and let go of the Orville. That's all. Um, but anyway, the uh, yeah, the, the Orville to me is has actually been far more uh star trek ish than any other star trek stuff i've i've seen in a long time um that's impressive because it feels very much yeah I've, i know a lot of people that have agreed with it too um that's good though um, yeah it's 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 very it's very entertaining i mean the, the good news is you do still have a lot of a lot of that uh i don't want to say irreverent necessarily um yeah. it's not typical it's not like fa watching family guy in space Oh no no! I, I I have actually seen one episode of it. My brother showed me. It was really good and funny. Like it was it was pretty funny. Yeah, like I, I like the fact that they touch on things like um, uh, they they touched on trans issues actually in one episode early on in the first season. I think it was early on in the first season, um, where uh, the the uh, Klingon <laughs> uh, knockoffs, um, their yeah. whole race is male. <laughs> and uh they they have a baby and it turns out to be female and then on their home planet turn they find out that oh they've been doing sex changes mandatory sex changes for like generations um <laughs> and it like it actually gets into this whole thing like i don't know where i stand on and stuff whatever but the show the way it was executed very well they kind of presented both ideas of like the child why would you do this to a child the child's not ready to understand anything that's that it was really really well handled so it's uh, while it's, still actually being funny so it's like uh the, what's the argument like um logic versus versus tradition um, or something like that kind of like a logic versus tradition or versus emotion things like that like like the, the times are changing type of thing yeah there's a lot of there was a lot of uh, a lot of interesting uh a lot of interesting viewpoints in my opinion uh well, that's the, good. In how it was handled. Well, that's that's what made. Um, see, that's why I like the next generation because Picard's speeches. I mean, that's like number one thing you can look up on the internet and everything that people like really respect the most in that show is like his point of view on things. Yeah. And I mean, it, it was like with the whole cast itself. So they all had very specific viewpoints on things, and you get to hear monologues of them. And they're all amazing, but Picard had the best monologue where he explains his philosophy, um, like, you know, why something is wrong or why this should happen or, um, talk. He also adds in like some like humanity type stuff where it's like this is, you know, like how can it, like he says like how can we do this to a baby? Like there's some things like that like uh, involving like arguments on that basis. You know, it's like, um, that's why I'm saying like uh, what I'm trying to get to is that. I, I think you should just at least try to go back to, to the next generation because I, I with me I can enjoy it uh, very much so even to this day like I, I still watch episodes from time to time and it's still thoroughly entertaining like it's still it, it has aged well I, I would like to say and I miss I miss uh, shows like that like you were saying like the sitcom thing uh, where every yeah. episode is like its own thing and um uh, different very specific like camera angles like sitcom worthy almost or um I, I miss that those type of camera shots and i wish god i wish star trek discovery had that type of nostalgic feel for me and picard but it doesn't it's like way more like cinematic it's more modernized so it's kind of a bummer yeah um have you seen fair, part of my issue is go ahead stuff so oh okay <laughs> Have you seen Star Trek Discovery? I have not. I oh, have not heard much thank, good about it either. Thank God you don't want to watch it. You really don't. 
So I, I, it kind of like the, the what I've heard about it essentially not necessarily directly reminds me of Star Trek Enterprise like by comparison, mm -hmm. but uh, it reminds like the 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 general mood and tone that people have about the show reminds me of uh, Enterprise. Um, yeah, I don't know. There was there were some okay things in it, but I think what a lot of people what I didn't like is how it was like it, it was before. Uh, Captain, or it was before Kirk and that Enterprise crew. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Because, like, you see it in today's uh, technology for, like, you know, making and editing and CG and stuff, but it's but it's old equipment. But you really can't tell that it's old equipment from how the set design looks. So mm -hmm. the fact that they didn't make it a sequel series, which I guess is what Picard is, they should have released Picard uh, instead of Star Trek Discovery, you know, that would have been a lot smarter yeah. because, you know, people were wanting a sequel to that because people were, people wanted to see what Picard did after like Next Generation Deep Space Nine because Deep Space Nine was pretty much a direct sequel to, to TNG. Um, to be fair, they may not have uh, been able to do that because they might not have been able to get um, Patrick Stewart. Yeah, and I mean, he is always a busy man. <laughs> He was too busy being Xavier, Charles Xavier in X-Men. <laughs> um, <sighs> it is kind of funny with him. For for such a quote-unquote classy guy, yeah. he loves doing a lot of weird stuff for a guy like... You, you don't picture a guy like him up, up scan, uh, upscale, upstanding <laughs> uh, British gentleman type person <laughs> yeah. to be yeah. playing Professor X. Um he, who he plays on like what is it american dad um, yeah american dad every P picard every time he appears on every time he appears on family guy yeah. he plays so many different he does all these different goofy ridiculous things that are so out of what you perceive his character yeah. to be yeah he's in um, um he he does voice acting like you were saying he does voice acting for games he's in elder scrolls 5 or elder scrolls 4 oblivion he's the he's the king or the emperor and mm -hmm. He's even a uh, main character or a mentor in one of the Castlevania games. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, that's great, though. He's got, um, he's got range, and he's, like, amazing at everything. Like, if that mm -hmm. man can narrate to, to me for the rest of my life, like, doing, like, Audible, I'd be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Keep going. It's such uh, a humorous task. Yeah. And, yeah, he still got it as Xavier. He was even uh, in the Logan movie, which, by the way, is an amazing, uh, amazing movie. I love the Logan. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was fantastic, too. So, um, so that yeah, that's a good thing you didn't see Star Trek because, you know, Hollywood and, and uh, Alex Robert Kurtzman or Alex Kurtzman, whatever his dumb self is named, uh, yeah, he he's basically just the worst. Like, he's just not a good writer, you know. Um, and then he's working on Picard. So, as I mentioned before, I'm, I have very, I'm very worrisome because the show is coming out real soon. Um, well, they've already they've already cleared it for a season two. Yeah, which is interesting. They kind of did that yeah, with The so, Witcher. So, I love The Witcher. It sounds like they just hit their points. Um, yeah, yeah. Which you know, we'll see. You know, I will watch it. I don't want to watch any spoilers. You know, hopefully I can avoid it because I just want to see it to see it and be like okay i like this this is very good very heartfelt homecoming for the star trek crew and tng and then for viewers who grew up and watched it you know yeah um okay so if picard does well maybe hollywood didn't completely scramble it hopefully but uh you know i don't i, I think they are making a, a star trek 4 movie i think they're maybe i don't know I thought I heard that they were rebooting the movie. Uh, <laughs> no. I can't do I mean, it, Jake. Gonna... Jake, I can't do it. Oh, man. What I'm... um. What? Look, look, uh, what? Star Trek 4 reboot the... Should Star Trek 4 reboot the franchise? Okay, no, I guess it's not. Oh, okay. I guess I saw rumors that they were going to reboot. It's just it's like not... it's like a discussion thing right now. Uh, yeah, maybe they haven't. Maybe they haven't actually been clear on what's going. On. So uh, um, let's let's go. Oh, to wait, it does say the voyage home, so it is. It does look like it's um, <clears throat> going to be a sequel. Oh, interesting. Oh wait, no. 
Oh my word, this is bizarre. Okay, it's... I'm going to send you a picture of this. <laughs> if you Google Star Trek IV, it says A Voyage Home, 1986. Yeah. Um, but the pictures are a mixture of Chris Pine, the Chris Pine movie. Yeah. And the original Star Trek IV the Voyage Home movie. So I thought it was I thought it was the new one because I saw Chris Pine's face. Oh, I see. So they're screwing things up. Google once again. Usual screwing things up. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I guess it's I guess it's just uh, unless they're making a fourth. Unless they're naming it Star Trek for the Voyage Home. Kind of like how they did with um, um, Khan. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, Into Darkness and stuff. Yeah. Which a lot of people if... sure love that movie. Lol. Just kidding. <laughs> um. Okay. So, do you think? Do you think Star Trek is? Is uh? Do you think Hollywood has ruined the franchise already? Like like Star Wars. No. Not. I don't not think any not of there it yet. Has been, I don't think any of it's actually been ruined. I don't think any of it necessarily will be ruined. Mm -hmm. Um. Because the, like for example, Fallen Order, the yeah. Fallen Order Battlefront Two is now becoming more popular, and because the game has actually started uh, being being more balanced and less uh, about the microtransaction, all it's actually become apparently. I keep hearing it's actually a good game now. Um, yeah, for sure. I actually just I, I was actually installing it because <laughs> I have a friend that wants to play. It actually is I'm pretty just, fun. It's just not worth the money for me. Um, I'll I'll, I, get, I'll I, get it free for five bucks. <laughs> so you could be um, just have this cursed object next to your crystal skull right i actually bought i'm actually stuck with the original battlefront because i bought it on playstation 4 uh on disc um for like five bucks but oh it's too, yeah, yeah it's too cheap now that i couldn't trade it in uh even a year and a half ago yeah i couldn't trade it in um it was that worthless they wouldn't accept it for a trade in i was like can you at least just take it off my hands because i don't want to have it i'm not going to play it and they're like, no, we can't take it without paying you. And right. you're not going to pay. Yeah, and you won't even give me like a penny for it. No, we can't. Oh, wow. okay, fine. Now I'm stuck with it. <laughs> I, I actually um, still have the first one too on, on Expo. And I have the second one on PC. I, um, but yeah, I, given the other avenues that, uh, the Star Wars universe between book, comic, cartoon, gaming, it doesn't, when I say gaming, um, it, it doesn't, I don't see the movies being enough, especially when you have things like the Mandalorian kind of showing them like, look, even if the Mandalorian isn't like, you know, Game of Thrones quality or whatever, by comparison to a lot of other things they've tried, this is the right direction for you to go. And this is the direction that your the, adult audience yeah. that are paying you <clears throat> want you to go in. The Mandalorian, plenty of kid stuff. the Mandalorian is, is more Star Wars than the new trilogy. There, I said it. <laughs> uh, see, I don't, I don't know, because that's all. That all depends what cues you're taking from what films and all that. But for for me, it all felt like it was in the same universe. Well, but here's why I say that because when you watch the new trilogy, there's just like all this pointless, useless crap or things that are supposed to be useful, like story elements, and it's just never utilized, and you know stuff like that it just never falls through, and it's like a jumbled mess. You know, it's like a Picasso painting, except it's not art. Um, yeah. but when you watch the Mandalorian, remember we were talking about, it, it's simple. It's simple. Yeah. You understand what's going on and it's original in terms of like in the star Wars realm, you know, no, uh, well, there is an ATST. <laughs> I was about to pull well, a, uh, yeah. uh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, um, like a lot, a lot of things though, people want flex, they want detail. So the problem is when you try and touch on all this complexity and detail, anything that you miss gets more scrutinized than it would have if you hadn't started building that reputation. Yeah. Star Wars, the the, the original Star Wars movies, they are they were good for the time. If they came out now, they would be garbage movie. Yeah. Um, there the the thing is that we have there's a there's a specific reason we like the story and the lore and all that of Star Wars. The, the, based on the how the original trilogy the, the original trilogy was executed yeah a lot of people because it doesn't hit the right cues um they feel 
let down by it. One thing I didn't like the first um, was uh, the Force Awake for was the fact that I walked out. Wow. Well, that was uh, a New Hope part two. Um, yeah, exactly. And the funny thing is, that, the funny thing is, a lot of people I saw saying that, uh, you know, well, the new one was uh, a New Hope part two. I was like, no, 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 no. Force Awakens was a New Hope part two. This movie took parts of all three movies and combined them into one. Pretty it much. Was a, yeah. It was a. It was partially to, and, and they've even said this, I believe, that it was partially to uh, bank on the nostalgia and bank on the uh, success of the oh, original. Oh, of course, it, cash grab. Because it's, it's been so, well, not only that, but it's been so long since the originals came out that yeah. part of the idea was to give that same feeling um, to a new generation that may not like the originals because of the age quality of the video. Yeah. Um, because those movies have aged so... They've aged somewhat well, but there's parts of those movies that have aged very poorly. Oh, well, um, A New Hope hasn't aged well at all. It's it's pretty archaic. It's like being held together yeah. by by tissue paper or by tape. Yeah. <laughs> and then like the the, the the funny thing is like watching the lightsaber battles as an adult from that original trilogy, oh, all of God. them are atrocious. They're terrible. Yeah. Um, uh, like especially if I keep hope. seeing going around of Luke where he kicks where he kicks one of the fighters um at, at Jabba's uh at the sarlacc pit he kicks one of the guys in the face but his foot is a full two feet away from the guy's head yeah um <laughs> stuff like that yeah. the joke is it was a force kick um, oh yeah yeah that's awesome yeah the whole obi-wan versus uh vader fight in a new hope is so bad it's just like mm -hmm. but like well, even even luke Va luke versus vader were never um i mean they shot them a little differently than they did the oh, obi-wan yeah, yeah. versus vader so they looked a little better but, yeah, but it was just straight as an adult a lot of the magic is law um see that's the thing that, that's though. all i'm saying that's the thing um the the star Wars, the lightsaber battles they're not as like how do i say um they have more emotion than what they do in the in the prequels because the prequels they were just like flip here choreograph this but there was yeah, like sure. but they were like just like statues on how they looked and stuff. It was just like, ah, oh, everything's great. Slice through this, no problem. You know, no no sweats or anything. They're just like perfectly clean. So that's yeah. why I like um, the, the original trilogy because there was so much like hype building up to these fights. Like with, uh, I mean, even with like the Obi-Wan and Vader fight, there was like so much like suspense building and stuff. <laughs> like you kind of get like an idea. I'm like, oh shit, what's about to happen? And the Empire Strikes Back the, like the fight is like at the end of the movie and it's like the the to me it was like the best part of the movie because there's so much like emotion behind it it's so dark it's such a dark fight and if you follow like the symbolism of the fight then it's great but yeah like my friends and i used to make fun of like vader just like slashing slashing at luke when he's climbing the pipes and stuff he just looks yeah. like really silly like I, I get that you know um but like everything else oh, yeah, like, the message the messaging and the reason for it is great yeah yeah um and then in the return of the jedi like the the fight scene of luke against vader again was really cool because like you know it's very it's very intense because like he's vader's like talking shit to luke trying to provoke him to go all dark side you know and then yeah luke goes dark side and then fucks up vader's hand and then you know the whole emperor th scene was pretty cool you electrocuted. Know, anyway so yeah, yeah. Overall, the, the choreographing is pretty abysmal, you know. But um, the message is good. But uh, that's what I'm saying. Is there's, there's some disconnect. Yeah, so, yeah. By 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 our today's standard, I mean. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the my, my, my uh, what I was gonna say though is, um, it's changed over the years, obviously, because if it's funny if you actually compare how the execution of those movies was, uh, the the first one gets a lot of the first, um trilogy gets a lot of credit because of the because of the the, the time the fact that it was starting everything and all that yeah yeah, yeah. true but the lightsaber fighting and in, in the lightsaber battles and the, the execution of a lot of the a lot of the fighting in general the the gunplay everything um was a little bit i don't want to say uh brutish but it was less it was a little bit more ragtag just survival type Whereas if in the prequels, look at look at the you're, you're dealing with a what's considered a civilized time. Whereas in, in the, the sequel trilogy, in the original trilogy, you're looking at um, a much less civilized time. The so end the, of days, the, yeah. 
the, the the way the fighting is done in these movies actually is kind of symbolic of the time that they're in um because then if you come into the the uh sequel trilogy it, it's all very brutal just wild slashes and oh yeah yeah things like that and ne neither ray or um or kylo had much training at all much formal training at all i should say and um, ray was just amazing right just at everything yeah, but, 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 but that's besides the point but i, I get what you're saying but, though yeah it, it's kind of cool to look at that i will i will give the the some things like that the, there's a i would say um uh consistency um with the the generation they're in because like if you think about how uh fighting took place um you know decades ago not centuries ago um yeah it would be you know, it was completely different to how it is now and, and how the society work is uh, how things oh yeah yeah. Cool, but, yeah so during the prequels everything was organized everything was flowing just fine you know like there's a jedi order there was trying to be peace and all that you know there was obviously rules war. of engagement type stuff yeah yeah it it, it made Everything was organized. It was like, uh, you know, some espionage, some political stuff going on. Yeah, that 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 did make sense. Now that I think about it, it's a pretty good point. But yeah, like you said, as as the original trilogy comes into play, it's you know, it's it's a dark time. Like it's the dark ages of the Star Wars universe because mm -hmm. the Empire is all evil and the Jedi are almost extinct and no one knows how to really understand what the Force is if they are Force sensitive. You know, so yeah. You know, Obi Wan barely had any time to teach him anyway. Uh, Luke he just taught him how to, you know, just uh, don't use your eyes, just trust your feelings. Put this helmet on. That was basically it in in the first movie. Um, mm -hmm. And the second movie, he, he had to self teach himself how to use the Force and everything. He was still clumsy uh, on everything. And then you know, not until he met Yoda. But Yoda didn't have a lightsaber. So Yoda didn't really teach him how to use a lightsaber, <laughs> just how yeah. to just how to use the Force or be acrobatic and lift things, you know, or understand what the Force was. And then, and then in Return of the Jedi, he was um, by today's standards, if if Return of the Jedi was made today, Luke would look. I mean, Luke was supposedly like this badass in in Return of the Jedi, but if you saw him today. They would have had him doing crazier stuff than like mm -hmm. some force persuasion or cutting speeder bikes and stuff. He would be like uh, like Neo in the Matrix or some shit. Um, yeah. Which is, I'm always sad that we never got to see that in in the Last Jedi because Luke, even though Luke was older, um, um, I mean, the Force would make him like acrobatic and still a badass, you know, just like how it did for Yoda in the prequels. Right. Um, it would have been so cool if they did that. It would have been great if they didn't use a Force projection. But um, I did like the fights in The Force Awakening because it's still a... Uh, it's becoming another tyrannical time, the New Order. That's like the, the new empire. And then this new republic is supposed to be like, you know, building up from the old, from the pre republic from the prequels. Um, yeah. But there was really cool uh, emotional battles with Kylo against Rey or against Finn. Like, I love that snow scene. I thought it was awesome. Um, it was pretty cool. Some, uh, some epic stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that wherever they go with the movies next, as much as I know, they're going to... Push... Baby Yoda! <laughs> yeah, I know they're going to push <laughs> ideology and stuff. Yeah. Um, because they, they made it such a, such a direct point to push ideology in and like that's the thing is i didn't i didn't think they were actually pushing ideology or anything watching those movies yeah um i could see why people were bothered a little bit somewhat by it um i didn't yeah. think they were until jj pretty much confirmed all after this movie came uh yeah. in interviews and stuff that like oh well yeah well we wanted to make her uh you know we wanted to make her you know the the best that anyone ever was um because really you, you you don't have a better justification for that than no because because he has a gun to his head from bob Iger and kathleen kennedy <laughs> <laughs> um but like that's the crazy that's the crazy thing to me like the, the whole series it's never it's never been um you know like anti-women or or uh the, no. a lack of diversity or anything like no. you like like the the only thing I could say that maybe I could agree with you that uh, the um, that there was a lack of diversity at all would have been um, the fact that uh, um, Vader was voiced by 
James Earl Jones, but he didn't actually play him. And that yeah. was actually more because they had already shot the movie and yes. didn't like it, the guy, the real guy's voice. So that's not even that. It's kind of the opposite. They replaced the white guy with a black. Guy. Yeah. So I. But not only that, you, you had um, there there was uh, what's his name? Um, Talking about Lando. Lando. Yeah, Lando's yeah. my man. But you had Lando. Lando is one of the one of the. One, uh, it was a fan favorite of the series. Yeah. Um, they're like. It's it's almost like some people don't like the original trilogy because there's two white guys and there's not two of anybody else. Like it, it's such it's such a specific <laughs> cord it's such a specific movie to complain about it when is. you have a strong female role model character. Yeah. Um oh well she's in a gold bikini. Yeah, okay, yeah. And then she kills a guy and she's based she's obviously not happy the entire time. She's basically been turned into a sex slave. <laughs> then she overcomes and kills the guy that has her being a sex slave. Yeah, it's called character well, progression. N well, not only that, it reinforces the idea that she was the strong, independent woman because she saved herself yeah. by killing him with the chain. Yeah. Um, but she was, like, but, but altogether, she was assisted by her friends too. So it's like, kill well, it. no, but right, but she, they just, they just distracted. Yeah. Ex yeah. In exactly. That, exactly. That exactly. So she, that gave her the opportunity to be like, okay, this is my, this is my time to shine. This right, is it. but see, that's that's my point though. Is like there's people that will that claim that oh yeah, but well, uh, Emperor Palpatine was behind everything. Okay, um, <laughs> shut the frick up. Yeah. I saw people complaining. Oh, I don't. I can't say that either. Um, <laughs> you can say whatever you want, man. Uh, I'm good. No, it's it's a direct spoiler. I don't know if you already know or not. I don't want to spoil oh, it. So, yeah. um, but there's 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 an argument about character and their parentage in um in one of the movies that recently has been a big problem. Oh, Ray, right? Yeah. Yeah, Ray's a Palpatine. I already knew that. Okay, you already know that. Okay. I didn't know <laughs> that or not. No, that's good. Um, They're all good. But, like, there's people that are complaining because Ray's a Palpatine because he created her with the Force. You idiot. That How does that... Just because he created with the, her with the Force... You're, you were created... You were created with your dad dad's sperm, num nut. Yeah. You're, you're not... You... you by that logic, you are living uh, a, uh, a every woman by that logic in the world um, is under the quote unquote patriarchy yeah. just because their dad has balls <laughs> yeah. that produce semen. That's that's all it takes. Apparent. So, um, it doesn't have anything to do with how your life progresses, how your parents treat. You. It has nothing to do with any of that. Apparently, just it, it, it's it's just Palpatine that. Was her just dad. that. Yeah. Exactly. So. Um, any, so she finally got backstory and then they didn't like it. Okay. Yeah. Like, what did you want? You wanted her to be a nothing? You wanted her to mean me, you know, be a nobody? Like that means more because anybody can just rise up. Okay. Yeah. Um, that makes even less sense because why would she know everything? At least this makes sense because she's descendant of like, yeah. what, what I would say is like the most powerful Sith in who knows how long. Um. So it makes more sense because she might have like been more set, more force attuned and more powerful by nature yeah. of uh, being having received some of that from her father. Oh sure, and everyone was thinking she was a Skywalker. That was that was yeah. the original thought. So that's yeah, how I you know. I didn't look, it. besides the political background of the movies, when the Force Awakens came out, I'm like, okay, well, she's probably like this is before you know. Because I was thinking ahead, I'm like, okay, the second movie is going to explain some things, give her some more. She'll probably go actually go through some training and stuff. That was before I saw the disaster of Last Jedi. So in the Force Awakens, I was like, well, if she's f using the Force and Force sensitive everything, and she's like a Skywalker, she's gonna be, she's gonna get like a, a boost, like a handicap already. You know, she's gonna, I mean, right? Who knows? She might have just been training. Her whole life living on Jakku, trying to survive. I mean, how do you? How else did she survive? She fucking scavenges like star destroyers and shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, maybe that was her actual training. You know, she was like learning how to survive with the Force because she was getting like bringing in scrap for 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 crappy food. You know, that was her using the Force to make a living. You know, um, and you know, like I said, everyone was thinking that she was a a Skywalker. But as soon as like everyone's like, oh man, a, a Palpatine, that's dumb. 
It can't be an evil Sith Lord. Nobody even knew... Well, some people knew that it was... Like, Star Wars Theory uh, guy knew that it was a, a uh, an offspring of Palpatine or whatever. But a lot of other people, I'm sure, did not expect that. They probably were thinking, Oh my god, Skywalker this, Skywalker that. Boom! Smack in the face. Except, yeah. how did you feel when Rey said at the end that I'm not a Palpatine, I'm a Skywalker? How did that make Stupid. you feel? <laughs> okay. It was dumb. Okay. It was very, very dumb. Uh, hopefully, in the JJ cut, they just they just uh, voice over that and it says I'm a Palpatine, and then that's it. Because <laughs> I mean, well, I could just be a Skywalker. Like uh, nobody knew. Like, did they even? No. I don't think anyone ever even expl. I don't think anyone actually even knew that Ember Palpatine was really, um the uh um, grandfather the sith yeah. i don't think he were i don't think that was ever really brought forth, oh was oh like like because they never Sidious say was actually palpatine knew. from in the past yeah then no one ever says that they knew that like it's yeah. never addressed in uh, you know any what? way shape or form and i think that's kind of um, i think that's actually interesting that you say that i think it's cool that it's still a mystery because mm -hmm. the only like, person would have been the only one to know Yoda and Vader and Anakin. Right, much. but Vader wouldn't have told anyone. Yeah, exactly. Well, That's yeah. Saying, like Yoda, Yoda would have been the only the only one that could have relayed that information. And he, as far as we know, after the after everything fell apart, just went into hiding. Yeah. Um, when Vader was when he became Anakin, he could have somehow told Luke or somebody, you know, when he was on the good side, when he was a Force yeah. ghost. It wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have made any sense for him to relay that information because it wouldn't. It was. It was. You know, decades after it happened. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think it's cool that it's still a mystery. It's like nobody knows, and yeah. I, I think that's great. That that that's how good his plan was. Like that's, it's that's crazy. Wait a minute. No, actually. Uh oh. Actually, no, because he w he wasn't going by. Em was he going by Emperor Palpatine? Uh, when when he became. Sith okay, Lord no, wait, you know what? No, you know what? They call him Emperor Palpatine. So they must have known. When did they call him Emperor in the, Palpatine? In the, real, in, the original, in the original trilogy, I think they call him Emperor Palpatine. Hmm. Because they, call they called him by the Emperor, not Darth Sidious. So that had to have been. Okay. Um, so, okay, so they, so they must have they, they, they must have known, even though there's not really a direct reason that they would have known. Because the only person to see... Um... um Sidious um, would have been good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I don't know. Man, that's interesting to talk about. That like I hope Star Wars Theory does a video like that. Someone should mention it to him. Oh um, yeah, the um the the, the I yeah the, the, the thing about her becoming a Skywalker, that was just that was actually what I had. That was actually part of Did you see the part with her her lightsaber at that part? I did heard that she has that? a she has a new one or something. Did it come from her staff? From the Force Awakens, that black thing. I saw. I didn't catch enough. The, I didn't catch visually enough of it to see whether this whether the staff was involved. But I've heard a lot of people say the staff was involved, like like as if she had um, built it onto the staff. So almost almost like it was a double ended saber. Yeah, um, I think it would have been great. Or, or like she had, or like she had a spear instead of a lightsaber. Yeah. Um, that would have been sick. She, you heard though the color of it, right? Yeah. It's, is it yellow? Yeah, it's yellow. Um, now, so, so it wasn't was it not the, it wasn't Leia's lightsaber. This is the thing I was saying. I wasn't sure if I I, I didn't want to say it earlier, but since you've already pretty much know all of it, <laughs> oh, I know everything. Um, <laughs> there was there was a gif or, or a video or something for a while of uh, where she what happens is she buries their saber. Yeah, and then she stands up and she's she looks at her hand where she's holding a saber, um, and she basically just in a ring sideways and supposedly according to this video i didn't see it, in, it happen in the theater but supposedly this video shows a blue green crystal equaling a yellow saber. oh really yeah that's which pretty interesting. i i don't know if i like that because it doesn't really make any logical sense because <laughs> If you took blue and green physically and mix them, you would get yellow. You wouldn't get yellow. No. The you get you mix blue and yellow and you get green. But yeah. if you mix, but apparently on the RGB scale, somebody um, trivia check. Uh, 
or Trivial Theater, whichever, which I can't remember which one she followed, which one she used. Um, but she pointed out to me that um, the RGB color scale, yeah, blue and green equal yellow. I don't understand why, but apparently they did. Um, <laughs> okay. So I don't know why these crystals would follow um, RGB instead of actual color um, science. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> like like, a, like on a technical level, science. it doesn't make sense. But yeah, it doesn't it's a fantasy movie, Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so confusing. Um, All right, so the, let's let, the let's. The movie was weird. Oh, of course, the, the movie, movie was weird. They pushed a lot, a lot of, of narrative they didn't need to push. Um, I'll be honest though, if I watch those movies without having all the social commentary from people on the internet, I probably wouldn't have noticed it. Yeah. Um, I would have no, I would have for sure noticed the pacing. <laughs> I yeah. would have noticed a lot of issues, but I wouldn't have necessarily noticed the the force, uh, pun not intended, um, stuff. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because I, I, you know, what I just went in like without even seeing this movie, I was like, you know what, I just don't care anymore about the hype for Star Wars. I've been let down, so I was like, all right, spoilers, here we go. Like I, I honestly didn't yeah. care. Um, it's. To me, it's it's fine, which is sad. It's like with the first Star Wars movie in that uh, that timeline that I didn't see in theaters. Well, can't help how I feel. So, yeah. uh, real quick, okay, um, since we're gonna wrap it up here, uh, what are? Um, I guess we'll do like some kind of lightning rounder thing. Uh, so we talked about Star Wars. Hollywood has ruined that. Um, you said Star Trek hasn't completely ruined. Star, wait, yeah, Hollywood ruined Star Wars on a grand scale, and then you said Star Trek hasn't been ruined entirely yet, right? Uh, I, I haven't liked anything since some of these Deep Space Nine, so I, I, I would say maybe that's been ruined for the time being. It's not, it's not unre all of it's redeemable, but <laughs> yeah, okay, they would need to really, really work it. Okay, what about, what about Ghostbusters? Has Hollywood ruined Ghostbusters? Mm, we'll have to wait and see when the movie comes out. Uh, the, the trailer looks good to me. I like Stranger Things. I like uh, well, a lot of uh, other stuff. What about the franchise as a whole? Franchise as a whole? Uh, no, I don't think they've. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, what about um, what about superhero films like the Marvel Universe or DC? Um, the huh. people are ruining most of these, things. but um, okay. The especially, I mean, like for instance, Black Panther was way overweighted. It wasn't nearly as good as anybody gives no, credit for. It was, that's what it I was heard too. socially important, but it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a high quality film. It was not very good. Okay. So, um, so Hollywood has some like ups and downs with the Marvel movies, which I mean, it makes sense because yeah. there's so many of them. Like, yeah. Like I, as much as I didn't want to see Robert Downey Jr.'s character die, that was a fantastic scene. Yeah, it was. Okay. So Marvel is still okay, you think, under Hollywood? Yeah. Okay. What about what about DC? <laughs> what about DC? Their movies suck. It's not even Hollywood do Hollywood doing that. It's them. It's them not knowing how to make a movie. Okay. Um, they keep right. trying to make them over overly CGI piles of garbage. You know, they yeah. want they want it to look like a cartoon. You can't do it. It's not. It doesn't look good. It doesn't play well. Did you and see? Then you try and rely on Superman for every look. Did you see Shazam? Did you like that? That one was okay. okay. That one was okay. Uh, Aquaman was okay at best. Wonder Woman was. Eh. There was a lot of stuff I didn't like in Wonder Woman, and it's not about you know it's not about like uh, you know being pandery or anything like yeah, that yeah, necessarily. Yeah. But there was there was there was definitely some things in there that just didn't make sense to me. Um, okay. In terms of how they it was execution. Okay. Um, what about uh, here? Here's here's a curveball. Um, just because this is like a childhood favorite. What about uh, Ninja Turtles? Do you think Hollywood has ruined Ninja Turtles? I didn't. I didn't hate the movies that came out. Um, I didn't hate it, them either. I did it not. It was hate them. so this the whole the whole genre the whole series uh, all of it has been aimed at kids. There was never one that one Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that was like aimed at adults really. So yeah. I, I take all of that with a grain of salt. I take most of these with a grain of salt because the the, the primary audience they're aiming at is uh, kids and families, and then uh, yeah. some of them have branched into darker audience. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I actually like the Michael the Michael Bay films. You know, despite how people feel about Michael Bay, like for Ninja Turtles, I didn't think they were that bad. I didn't mind the turtle designs, although he wanted to make them aliens, but thank God he went back on that. 
Uh, they actually made them mutants, not alien turtles. Um, I thought uh, Out of the Shadows, the sequel, was mm-hmm. a good. I thought it was a good movie. I thought it was pretty sweet to see Bebop and Rocksteady. I thought they were well done. I thought the turtles had some pretty cool banter. It was funny. The C- they looked pretty awesome in terms of like how big they are and like CG wise. Um, right. I don't think Hollywood's ruined turtles yet. I don't think they're ruined. Um, how about Transformers? <laughs> um, that's another one where I kind of get. Some of them have been really, really bad. Bumblebee uh, is good. Even, even B- Bumblebee even, is great. Bumblebee was Bumblebee was decent. Uh, there were some issues I had with it, but there was it was it was far better than um, the last couple of Transformers movies they did. Um, yeah. The first two I didn't think were that bad because again they were they're they're like primarily trying to convert a kids show into a yeah. family sort of family Popcorn movie. Flick, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't. It was more about the spectacle of it. It wasn't necessary. It wasn't just supposed to be about. Uh, you know, again, delivering a message or something. It was yeah. just so, supposed to be an entertaining flick, and that's I, what they does. I thought the Transformer movies with Shia LaBeouf in were fine. Like, the first one was fine. Um, mm. I'm going to run through this real quick. The first one was fine. People complained that there wasn't enough action, so they flip-flopped in the second movie. They gave it a lot of action, but the problem is with the second movie is that they had some really cheesy scenes, like the, the supposedly racist black Transformers uh the the clunker bots whatever like the scrapyard ones i don't know there was like two of them and they were supposed to be like this stereotypical black guy um yeah i, I remember the characters I, 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 it I didn't bother me valid yeah I, I, it didn't bother me and then and then like the whole like pot scene with like his uh shia labeouf's parents in the movie where they get high i thought that was kind of mm-hmm. pushing it real hard but besides that i enjoyed the movie um pretty much even if it was like some if it had some shitty character development or you didn't know what was going on from all the shaky cam stuff. Um, I really liked uh, the third one. I thought Dark of the Moon was pretty sweet. Um, had, I didn't really have too, pro- too too many problems. And then, um, of course, once it started with like Mark Wahlberg, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's when it shit hit the fan. But at least they tried to follow the timeline, which I thought was cool. It just kept going. But I hate how they just don't even talk about like Shia LaBeouf's character or anything. Um, yeah, I, I haven't seen. Really I haven't seen. Weird. I haven't seen the fifth one with Mark Wahlberg. The the sequel to his first one. I, I heard that one was pretty bad. But Bumblebee was was uh, a breath of fresh air in a lot of regards. Which so that After one's like Transformers two or three. Yeah, fell off. <laughs> yeah, but people still went to see it. Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah. I can't stop. Baby Yoda is pretty adorable. Um, okay, so closing question before we go. What is one sci-fi franchise? Um, maybe if it's if it's listed here, that's fine. But if it's not, uh, that Hollywood has ruined for you. Stargate SG One. Really? Like yeah. okay, it's, you like the, the movie. original Star? I should say Stargate. Uh, I loved Stargate SG when I was younger. So the TV, um, so you like the movie, right, with Kurt Russell? I remember seeing the movie. It was okay. Okay. Um, so but I like- felt like the movie was better. Uh, that the show was better. Okay, so the show like that's the one with the the black guy with like the thing on his forehead, right? Yeah. Okay. He so. actually he actually voiced of uh, Kratos uh, more recently. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so cool. He's actually another one. If you look up his uh, voice acting roles, it's surprising the amount of work that he's done that you would know him from and didn't realize it was. Oh, that's amazing. Because I believe he actually I believe he actually played Lex. If I remember correctly, he played Lex Luthor in one of the. It was Batman Beyond. Not about Batman. Wow. I can't remember. He, I'm pretty sure he played Lex Luthor at some point. It was either him or that other guy was mad. Oh, that's cool. Um, but but the, the number of characters they've both done is, is insane. Okay, um, so when did... Um, so Star Stargate SG-1, the show was good. Okay, was there another show that followed it? At Stargate Atlantis? Oh! Um, one. Was it bad? Yeah, I did not. I did not like it. It I... had a decent audience, I think, because it went for like four or five seasons or something. Wow, I don't even remember I, that. I was not a fan, and um, I liked that even <laughs> even after Stargate SG One um, ended the main cast slowly, like they faded out. Yeah. Um, I liked that. Um, okay, yeah. So they had five episodes, of, like, um, <laughs> yeah, of Atlanta. Um, I liked that 
even after the, the what they kind of did was they went back and started adding uh, movies instead where the original cast came back to do the movie um, <laughs> and kind of like undid some of the stuff that the show did to SG-1 oh, no. kind of in, I mean they didn't like undo it like retconning it or anything yeah. but the movie was like okay well they're all still in these advanced positions but for whatever reason they have to come back and team up to go on this mission together and they did like four of those movies I think Oh, um, no. That's so it was kind of cool to get those extra things. But like the yeah, Stargate yeah. SG-1 kind of as it went, they kind of overstayed their welcome more or less, like where the, like the entire cast was like slowly peeling off. And I think it ended up being just like the one guy was still on the show while everybody else had gone off to do other projects and stopped wow. working on the show. Um, I don't know if it's because they wanted to leave or if they written them out of the show or what. But yeah, they they, they kept the show going way too long. And then they tried to do Atlantis, I think, as uh, SG-1's final seasons were failing or, 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 or um, airing. Yeah. Um, um, but, I, yeah, I just, I could never get into Atlantis. I could never get into So, it. are you hoping that they do a, another Stargate series sometime soon? I would like them to do it. I, it's, there's plenty there for that. Um, there's plenty of meat on those bones to... Okay. Uh, even it's, even if you were to just even if you were to just entirely reboot the universe, it's been yeah. plenty long now because it's been, uh, I think it was two thousand four, two thousand five when Holy Atlantis crap. aired. Holy um, crap! Yeah, so it ended, something like that. So it ended like in two thousand eight or two thousand nine. Something like that. Yeah. Wow, so yeah. I can't remember if it was the. I can't. Remember, it was somewhere between two thousand four and two thousand nine. Somewhere in there that it ended. So it's been over a decade for sure. <sighs> um, I think it's time. It, it definitely makes sense to, to bring that back now, I'll be honest. I hope um, I kind of hope they do, because uh, I wouldn't mind getting into it. Because I, I only watched the movie. I, I can never really get into the show. Oh, I never got into the show, not because I didn't like it. It's just because, I I don't know. I, it's just one of those things. I was first, like watching other stuff. Yeah. Well, the first season was kind of where they were like building everything. Um, they introduced you to um, to the character, Teal, the, the black guy we were talking about that played uh, Kratos. Yeah. Um they introduce you to all the characters and they're they're kind of like all fairly distant i'd say initially yeah. um and then i think it's like the beginning is the end of the season or the beginning of the season two where they um they actually kind of become a team um yeah yeah and that was that was that was my favorite that was my favorite i liked that better than star trek for the most part i liked it um better than most of the sci- sci-fi shows wow so sg sg1 went on for 10 years yeah, yeah. Nice. It was it was a long running. Show. Ninety seven to two thousand seven. All right, I'm trying to look for uh, Richard Dean Anderson, Michael Michael Shanks. It's one of them. The black dude. Oh wait, hold on. Look oh, for he... Teal. Oh, Christopher Judge. Okay, that's the guy. Okay. Yeah. I I just wanted to get his yeah, name he... instead of just saying black a... guy. <laughs> yeah. I could never. I, I didn't want to say Teal either because I didn't. But um. That's my boy Teal. But yeah, that. He. The funny thing is, when you hear the name Christopher Judge, and all, all of a sudden you're like, "Wait a minute, I've heard that name before." Yeah, I'm sure I've seen it before. Yeah, that's he's great. he's been in a lot of stuff. It's well, that's that's great that you have that you have a sci-fi franchise that that Hollywood hasn't um, really given the light of day anymore. Um, I guess almost yeah. burying it, which is kind of sad. That's always sad to do. I'm still waiting for a comeback of uh, Hercules from the 90s with Kevin Sorbo, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show growing up. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up for here. I just want to say thanks again, Jake, Internet Unwind, Mr. Unwind, for being on the Nico show or whatever you want to call it for the very first uh-huh. time. I'm glad, and I hope to see you again sometime soon. So, uh, just to remind everybody that you can find Internet Online on pretty much any social media platform, correct? Yep. Okay, so we got YouTube. Any of the main ones, anyway. Twitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Twitter. Are you on Facebook? Uh, I I have a page there, and it just gets liked by what appear to be like uh, bots from India every couple days. Oh, true, um, true. <laughs> yeah, I get but that, But I too. don't actually use it. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, anywhere else you can find them. And, uh, of course you can find me, Negro Legend, on Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, you'll see the links down below. So anyway, thanks, Jake. Hope to see you again, bud. Yeah.